world has gone insane. Cosplayers rule the conventions, gamers dominate the tabletop, and the internet. Sci-fi subjugates the movies, and fantasy rules the bookstore with an iron fist. Only one group can bring order to this unruly mob. A team of uber geeks, masters of the nerdly arts, trained for decades in the hobby shops and basements of the nation. Mobilized by the secret masters, they are the Department of Nerdly Affairs. Hello, operatives, and welcome to the Department of Nerdly Affairs. I'm your host, Rob Patterson, here with my co-host, Don Chisholm. In color, check your local listings. And tonight, we're going retro, as in retro theater. We're going to talk about shows that died far too early or not late enough. And to join us in looking at the recycle bin of television history, we have brought back Jack Ward. <laughs> the most recycled guest ever. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, Jack, I think you are. I think you are our number one guest. I mean, you're basically our honorary third member of this podcast. I really do appreciate it. I can't tell you guys how happy it makes me every time I hear you mention my name as well when I'm not there. So I just it's, I, I look for it. I'm so sad that I wasn't mentioned during the Super Sentai episode, but I didn't expect to be because I don't know very much about it. What an informative show that was. Yeah. Oh, no, that was a great episode. And uh, we had hmm. a lot of fun recording it. And we actually plan to do a Power Rangers episode in the future, which is going to be purely about like the American versions of all that stuff. But that's I hope you're gonna take. I hope you're gonna take him up and and get some of the original Power Ranger people on that show because he said he could bring them on. That would be awesome. Well, he, mm -hmm. could, he said he could bring on one of them, and so oh, okay. we're hoping to get one of the uh, yeah former Ranger on the show, and we'll we'll see what happens. But today though, anyway. the retro that we're gonna be talking about <laughs> is not Power Rangers, but retro TV in general. And I think that we should probably start by uh, talking about some shows that definitely died too soon. So Don. What's a show that died too soon that uh, you think should have had a longer life? Oh, oh sweet, merciful fates. I have a giant list. Um, <laughs> one, one thing I'm going to say on my list is I got like a lot of old cartoons. Okay. And something for folks who don't know, up until very recently, and even recently, this attitude still kind of holds. Mm. The cartoons were seen as like a one season thing, and then they went away, and that was the end of it. Right. Mm. Um, the idea of a continuing story is relatively new. Mm -hmm. And even then, you can see how a lot of the networks aren't really big fans of having, like, a continuing story. Oh, absolutely mm. not. I mean, back in the day, television was meant to be aired when it was aired, and it was supposed to be all self-contained. I mean, the idea of anything being a continuing story was pretty rare. Yeah. yeah. Unless it was a soap opera. That was the only exception. Or Western. Some of the Westerns went on for like a million episodes. That's true, but they were all self-contained episodes about, you know, cattle wrestlers and stuff. Yep. <laughs> just just like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. That's true. And the Incredible Hulk's another good example of that with the, what did you call it, man in a suitcase show? Where basically yeah. the guy goes from one place to another and that's the Incredible Hulk. Um, actually, mm -hmm. if you want to bring that up that little cabat, then I should probably also bring up another point that our younger listeners might not be aware of, which is that for most of TV history, there's a thing called a pilot, which is basically mm. where the networks every year would order a whole bunch of potential TV shows to be made, and there basically would be a one or two hour long TV movie, and uh, the pilots would be made, the networks would look at them and say, okay, these ones get a full season or a couple of episodes anyway. These ones just go into the trash bin and you can do whatever you want with them. And eventually some of these would end up as TV movies on uh, independent stations and such or uh, late night t television. And um, some of them would just end up in random places in the DVD bins or whatever. But the point is, <laughs> is that um, these pilots, and there were a lot of them, some of them were pretty wacky and pretty crazy. And we'll probably talk a bit about more of those later. But mm -hmm. I think first we should focus just on actual shows that at least got a season and uh, mm -hmm. right, probably should have gotten more than one. So, Don, right. what's the highest one on your list? What Start us out with something solid. What, what do you got? They're kind of over, all over the map, but I will start with one of my favorites, Magus XLR. Yes! I loved <laughs> Magus XLR. That's like the only super robot show that I liked. Did that only get one season? Yep. yep. Oh, okay. it's a. 
I th- actually I think it's uh, like one and a half. No, it's it's like one and a half. Okay. I think officially it's one season, but it ends up being like twenty episodes or twenty three episodes. Hmm. Okay, I can see that. Megus was actually pretty funny and pretty well done. That's true. And they 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 never said whether or not they defeat the Glorf in the future of that. Right. So well, it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Which always sucks. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I can see that. Um, although I would counter that actually with another robot show that uh, I... that ended too soon, uh, which you probably know is coming, which is uh, yep. Symbionic Titan. Yep. Which that was the sim- next on my list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is another, which is, I would, sorry, I have to say, that's my favorite American robot show. Is Symbionic uh, Titan. Never even heard of it. <laughs> there you go. So. See, that's why it died after one season. Of, <laughs> it was wow. uh, made by the creator of Dexter's Lab and Powerpuff Girls, Gendy Tarkovsky, and Samurai Jack as well. Yeah, um, cool. This was made after he'd made Cartoon Network and a ton of money, and they said, what would you like to make? And he said, well, I've made Samurai Jack. I'd really like to make a you know homage to Japanese jet robot shows. And they're like, okay, here's some money. Have fun. And so he produced a... <laughs> 26 episode uh glorious show that yeah it's this hybrid of american style and japanese style leaning towards the japanese but it's it's an american production still and it's basically about three okay two and a half teenage refugees that end up <laughs> that end up on earth um after their planet is destroyed and the half is actually their robot guardian slash companion and mm-hmm. um Together, the three of them can kind of merge together and form a giant robot called the uh, called the Symbionic Titan. And um, yeah, it was actually a really well done show. It's difficult to explain why, but it, Gendy really took a lot of uh, risk with it. it. There's a lot of experimental stuff, and um, and hell, the best part is that the the character with the big love story arc is the robot, not either of the yeah. scenes. and that and it's just <laughs> glorious. <laughs> Referring to the actual robot caretaker, not the giant robot. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, but it doesn't end on a cliffhanger, though. I mean, it could have definitely used with a second season. It had more to cover. But mm-hmm. it does actually end with them kind of sort of defeating at least the first wave of bad guys, so to speak. But So that's why it's kind of a bit borderline on whether it would actually be necessary to have another season. But it would have been wonderful because it was a great show. It really was. Yeah. And it definitely ended too soon. I recommend. All right, Jack, let's keep moving. What do you got? <laughs> well, I, I stuck with, first of all, I don't have any animated ones here because I stuck with like live action shows and I stuck with science fiction shows. Okay. that's so, right. Science fiction fantasy shows because yeah, I had to narrow it down somewhere. Oh, so definitely. I have my top 10 and I have a bunch of different honorable mentions. So I, I, I should get. I, it, normally I'll go backwards from my top 10, but I'm just going to get the first two out of the way because everybody knows of them. So mm-hmm. the very first thing, of course, is Firefly, right? Yep. Everybody, knew you know, that's knew that was coming. I think we could do an entire <laughs> show on Firefly. I don't think we need to go any further than that. Mm-hmm. But other than the fact that it's the one show that you can give people who don't know anything about but like science fiction and will probably end up loving it by the time they're done the series. Mm-hmm. They'll we'll watch a couple of episodes and go, this is okay. By the time they're done, they're, they're, they're crying while they're singing the theme song. So <laughs> it was <laughs> Joss Whedon's big show that everybody loved. Um, the Joss second Whedon and one, Kim Minear, by the way. Everyone forgets Tim poor Minear. Kim. Uh, when, I think it was Minear, wasn't it? Yes, um, it's Tim Minear, and he wrote my favorite episode, yeah, which is so, called Out of Gas. Which, as I still maintain, Tim Minear is actually the reason for that show. I mean, in conjunction with Joss, I think there was a synergy there, because that's, cause that's, to me, is the best thing Joss ever did, but I think it's because he was working yeah. with Tim. I could be. Joss had a really good idea, though, and he got it from yeah, he did. Uh, reading a Civil War book. And that's what gave him the idea in the first place. But Tim is Tim is a, a marvelously amazing writer. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm sure he – and he also brought a couple of other people over from Buffy right. to help him write stuff as well. And I'm sure that in the writer's room, it made a big difference having everybody there to sort of help out with various different characters. I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. But I just have this thing when people give Joss credit for that show, I like to stick up for poor Tim. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know the guy or anything like that. But I think he did – I think his contribution should not be under underestimated. It's he's the Gene L. Kuhn of of uh, Firefly. I don't yes. know who, if you know who that is. Gene L. Kuhn from who did Star Trek. Yeah, the other Gene. Um, 
the other gene, which nobody talks about, but the guy who created the Klingons and the mm -hmm. peace, yeah, your gaining peace uh, initiative and a bunch of other interesting things. So, yeah. yeah. And of course, the second one then has to be the original Battlestar Galactica, which yep. only lasted go. a season, which blows my mind because it was such a cultural event. And uh, there's mm -hmm. there's a really good uh, there's a really good documentary on it where all the original actors are talking about their memories of it mm -hmm. and having a lot of fun with it. And one of my favorite bits that they're talking about is is the the game that they played. And I forget what it was. It was some, I forget what it was called. Now I should have looked oh. this up beforehand. Um, but they they you know it was sort of like a bit like uh, like football and a bit like basketball because they yeah. were throwing stuff into hoops, mm -hmm. but. All the women loved it because the men were just total beefcakes. They were in these like really short, like short, like <laughs> speedo underwear with like equipment. And the guys were always embarrassed when they came out to play it. So, <laughs> I, I just, it's, it's a really funny documentary. Check it out. I never I saw it before. It was very cool. Okay. Well, and now was that on YouTube? That was on YouTube. Okay. I'll see um, if I can put a link in the show notes then. Yeah, that would be great. It's it's a, it's about an hour or something like that. It's 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 actually quite cool. Um, okay. So I, I got those two out of the way because those are things that people uh, would think of automatically. So, but mm -hmm. let's go to my number three one, which people may not know of very well, Kings, which was in two thousand and nine. Um, do you know that show? I have oh, vague memories of it, but I never watched it. I know of yeah. it. Yeah. I loved it because it was a drama that was set in an alternative Earth, or at least a, an alternative future Earth. It, mm -hmm. I think it would do very well now if it had been picked up by something like you know HBO or Amazon Prime, because it's effectively um, the Handmaid's Tale in many different ways of uh, of uh, America splitting into two, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and having this strange sort of um, right of kings which um, the, the, one of my favorite actors of all time, and again, the name just completely escapes me at this point. He was in, um, he was in uh, Deadwood as well and a bunch of other Ian things. Ian McShane. Ian McShane, thank God. Um, yeah, I first saw him in Lovejoy. What a great actor he is. Yeah, yeah he is. He found the audience that it really needs to have. But it, 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 they were actually taking the series from loosely based on the biblical story of King David, which was kind of cool, but right. set the kingdom in sort of a modern day United States and used all kinds of interesting imagery with butterflies and the whole bit. It was a very cool show. Right. And it only lasted one season. Now was it That's a right. thirteen episode season or twenty six? I'm guessing thirteen, right? It it didn't even finish. So I think it ended up being thirteen or something that was that it, it didn't even finish its full run of, of what it expected because it back in the day it was trying to go for more like twenty two or right. something like that so right. it went from march 3rd to july 25th in 2009 and it was gone right so i'm gonna zip through just a couple more because mm -hmm. there's so many while we're doing it so right. my number four was the 1990 uh 1998 show cupid with jeremy hmm. piven um do you remember that show nope it yeah, was I can't it remember. was it was kind of like early edition and the sort of same kind of setup, if you remember that show, early edition. But early edition went for a number of different series or a number of different episodes, so it doesn't get on the list. Um, but Cupid was was played by Jeremy Piven, and mm -hmm. the story was – it was a, another drama, strangely enough. Um, it was a comedy drama series created by Rob Thomas, and the mm -hmm. idea was this doctor who was a, a Chicago psychologist was given in charge of this man named Trevor. Trevor Hale, who was Jeremy Piven, who believed his he was Cupid, and he was sent down from Mount Olympus by Zeus at, to connect a hundred couples, but he couldn't use his powers, so he had no powers, so he couldn't prove he was Cupid. So he went around setting up these these people to fall in love, and there was suggestions that this wasn't in his head, that there actually was. They they actually show this guy comes down and talks to him, who's Cupid, at, or I mean, who's Zeus at one point. And so you're like, he's not making this up. He really is Cupid. And it was <laughs> yeah. it was a cute little story. And, and it was, a, you know, one of those, like I said, early edition in the same way where it sort of had, you know, a, an opportunity to help people and make the world a better place kind of thing. Right. And apparently they did get a remake, but it also only lasted a year. So obviously the concept wasn't strong enough on its own. I never saw the remake, though, in 2009. Right. Me neither. No. Nope. Number five was another one that I like. Just kicks me in the gut. It's um, Brimstone. Oh, okay. I really got into that show. It was a Fox series show about a guy who 
it, it, it gets uh, clawed out of hell, mm-hmm. um, and he's he has a job from the devil. The only reason he, the only way he can get out of hell, the devil will let him out of hell permanently if he can return 113 souls who escaped to Earth. Right. So he, so he's hunting these people down. Uh, who are these demons or whatever? These well, these, they're they're these, sinners. Yeah. Sinners, mm-hmm. the souls, and he has to shoot them in the eyes because the eyes are the windows to the soul, right? And then they explode and they go back to hell, kind of thing. <laughs> so he, they didn't. It didn't nearly make it to 113 episodes. I would have loved to have seen what was going on because <laughs> they had mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Is it is it John Glover who played um, the name sounds familiar? Who played the devil in that? It was he's he was a really great character. He played in um, Smallville. He played mm-hmm. Lex Luthor's father in Smallville. If that, yeah, if you I know, think, I think, yeah, I, I, I remember him from that. Yeah, I think, I think John, yeah. Lover, he would be really good at that, actually. Yeah, he, yeah, he, it was just like right up his alley to play something like the the Satan for something like that. And they actually showed Jesus in there too, which was, was this black guy who was mm-hmm. really, who was really very quiet and interesting, and sort of gave him kind of hope. And it was really a show about hopelessness in many ways, right? And right. just sort of holding on. So. I really quite enjoyed that. So that's my my top five. I'll, I'll come back with the others when when Don gets a chance for more. <laughs> right, right. Well, well, we'll let Don speak a little bit. Okay. So so Don, let's hear some more from you. What are some other shows you think that uh, got canceled too soon? All right. Let me uh, start. You mentioned Galactica. That's on my list. Mm-hmm. Technically, it has a second season. We pretend no. that that no no, no it doesn't. No, no. It's, we it's, it's that own that series. Exist. It's its own series, and yeah, Galactica 1980 was awful, and I, it's one of those that I never wanted to see back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for if, if anybody out there doesn't know this story, uh, what ended up happening the original Battlestar Galactica is they moved it from 8 p.m. to 7 p.m., mm-hmm. which put it in family hour, so they had to kitty it up. So Galactica 1980 is this absolutely terrible kitty version of the original story. Well, not just that though, because remember they also they cut their budget by a huge yeah. amount, and so yeah. that's one of the reasons why they're on Earth. Because the, basically, the Galactica shows up on Earth, and the fleet shows up, and they're like, "What well, in modern day?" And they're like, "Well, how do we integrate ourselves?" And so the whole point of Galactica 1980 is it's supposed to be about they're slowly integrating into human society secretly. Yeah, um, like they're creating little colonies and stuff on the Earth without humanity really being aware of them. It's mostly right. centered around two Viper pilots who I can't remember their names. I Dylan just... and Troy. Dylan yeah, and Troy, there we go. Oh my god, I can't believe I remember that. <laughs> I feel bad about myself right now. And they basically <laughs> but the thing is they do things like they go chasing through time, they try they chase down Nazis in one episode. Yeah. They, yeah. they go t- No, sorry, there's an evil guy from the fleet who's like trying to muck with Earth's history, so they go back in yes. time to stop yeah. him. And it go back to World War Two at one point. It was all over the place. Now yeah. the the best episode was whatever happened to Starbuck, which was yeah. actually um, a leftover episode from the first season that they just didn't get around to. Wow, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. That's why yeah. it's so different than everything else. They just well, do you, they, not sucking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. do you know the big kicker too about Troy? First of all, Dylan, by the way, is uh, Dick Van Dyke's son who yes, yes, plays in Diagnosis Murder later on. Mm-hmm. Um. But the character who played Troy, do you know the the big reveal of him? No, I don't remember what. His real name is Boxy. Yeah. Well, no, they they tell you that at the beginning. I think I don't think it was at the beginning. I think it was a little later on in the series. Oh, he's kind of supposed thing, to, it, he's supposed to he's Boxy. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's they, Apollo's adopted son, right? So yeah. Oh, yeah, I they didn't know that. Okay, no, they, I yeah. actually never knew that. Thanks, Jack. There you go. Because <laughs> nope. yeah. they drop a line about it. I think it's the, the the first episode, but by then you're so numb you don't actually notice. Yeah. But it's just like a little. <laughs> it's just like a little line they drop at the end. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I did not know that. Huh? That that's actually that's supposed to. But it makes sense. It is supposed to be years later. Yeah. Um, right. And, and it's, so, Adam is still in it. Yes. He's, he's like the with only, a beard. Yeah. Well, Adam is there with a beard. <laughs> I think Ty's still around, isn't he? Because most yeah, I think Ty's still gone. around as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it's him and Ty, and then the rest of them I think are gone. Like they're the yeah. only two I think from the original. They were all yeah. wiped out. Yeah, if they were lucky. I mean, and then we get the <laughs> and then we got the return of Starbucks. It's an awful show, folks. It really is. Oh. It, it's just it's just oh oh it's, and, yeah. And it's available on DVD for those who <laughs> wish to torture themselves. Yes. Are you yes. kidding? 
No. Did they actually spend the money to press that on DVD? I have a set. I got it for like six bucks on Amazon. <laughs> How is it possible to have that and not the entire series with the original music of WKRP in Cincinnati? Is that one? No, sorry. It's because there is no God. That's right. <laughs> how, how many episodes did Galactica 1980 last? Again, it's like seven or eight. Oh. It's not It's not many. Really? I thought there'd be more than that. No, it's, just, it's another one. It just feels like there was more. But yeah, there's not very many. <laughs> yeah. I, it was. I will look it up here. There were ten episodes. There okay. were ten. Yeah, that feels about right. That's Which is about cool. nine and a half too long. <laughs> 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 yeah. Barry Van Dyke, yes. Yeah, and Kent this, McCord. Kent McCord yes. is the other guy, yeah. He he and plays the, Troy. That's right. And the sad the sad thing is the two main guys mm-hmm. they they didn't do too bad. They were yeah, no, they, they're okay. They, if if they had a show that hadn't been hamstrung by the network, that's they right. They might have done okay, but it was again it was all these obstacles that were put in the way that I it really just killed the show. Oh, yeah, they were decent was, actors, yeah. Yeah, they were. And by the way, I was wrong. It's not Ty, it's Boomer. Colonel Boomer. Oh, oh Boomer's that's right. Boomer's moved up yeah. into, that, into Ty's role at that point. Into Ty's role, okay. that's right. Yeah, so he's the only other one from the original that's there. Everyone else, okay. is, everyone else is gone. It's just uh, Adama and Colonel Boomer. There we go. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Troy and Dylan were all right. It's just that everything else kind of sucked. All right, so... <laughs> all right. It's a, so we better. That was um... Battlestar Galactica got to, uh, quickly changed to Galactica 1980. <laughs> but <laughs> the aspect of Battlestar Galactica, for those people who don't know, I mean, it was everybody. It was the. It came out as strangely enough, the pilot came out in the theaters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and then they t- then they took it because they were jumping right on top of the Star Wars phenomena. Actually, yeah. that's and, not quite true, Jack. It came out in the theaters in Canada and Europe. It didn't come out in the United States. Mm-hmm. Really? I remember reading that somewhere. It was actually only released for us. It wasn't released for them. Hmm. Oh. That's kind of like the Patrick Bergen Robin Hood was released in the theaters in um in Europe, but not in North America. Because the Kevin Costner Robin Hood swallowed up all the ro- all the theater time. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm wrong. Yeah. Sorry. I'm wrong. The theatrical version was released in the US on May 17, 1979, which is after okay. the final episode of the TV series aired. Weird. Oh, okay. So it was released. I was right, sort of. It was released in Canada and the other places first. On, on Ontario, among other. Wow. Yeah, because the uh, the Marvel comic was uh, prefaced by a um, a Marvel super special, and I seem to recall that. Like, if anybody doesn't remember, the Marvel super specials were basically uh, magazine sized comic books. Mag- or and then sometimes they did them as treasury editions later on, which were the super big ones. Mm-hmm. But they were longer stories. They were kind of trying to be akin to heavy metal, I think. Yeah, yeah, they were. And G- Galactica was one of the ones they did. And I seem to recall that it was advertised as you know Paramount's new hit motion picture. It was, but yeah, here it is. Yes, it was released in Canada, seventh July, nineteen seventy eight, which is where I would have seen it actually. Um, mm. Sweden, uh, here basically. Sweden, France, West Germany, Finland, Spain, Philippines, all 1978. So in other words, right at the beginning of – right when it was first airing, basically. Canada yeah. was the only country, though, it looks like, that got it before it actually hit TV. Mm. Okay. And then everywhere else got – the United States did not see it, as I said, until 18th of May, 1979, after its actual run. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then other countries. The weirdest one, however, is Greece, where it didn't premiere until 2001. Wow! Wow! I'm not sure how I'm not sure how that one works as a as a uh, okay sure whatever. Look um, look at the amazing special effects we have in 2001. This is amazing. <laughs> but Galactica itself was yeah. People underestimate how I I tried, I don't want to turn this into a Galactica love fest, but the original Galactica. I yes. mean, many people today you'll laugh at oh cheap and cheesy and everything, but no, it was pretty epic. It was. Yeah. I, mean, I hate to use the comparison, but in some ways it was akin to Game of Thrones in its time. Like it had For a sure. huge cast of really good actors, and they were trying to create a fantasy television series like no one had ever seen before. And yeah. they did and as you pointed out, they, they had their own sports, they had their own culture. I mean, we've talked about this before. That was one of the things I didn't like about the remake. The remake yeah. effectively occurs in everything is just nineteen ninety uh, sorry, everything is just post nine eleven America. 
Yeah. Right. Like it's too rooted in America. It's not an alien society. They they pretty much strip out every fantasy element they can get away with. Now mm-hmm. some of that's for um you know budget purposes, shall we say, and to not be as silly, I suppose. But uh the point is is that they strip everything out. I mean, it's not a perfect series, the original one by any means, but it was no. one of those series that truly um uh, yeah. It, it, it was, was a water cooler, a cooler series where people actually talked about it. I, I love in the in the documentary. You'll have to find out there was um, they were talking with uh, I think it was Loretta Spang um, or Anne Lockhart. No, it was Anne Lockhart who right. played uh, Sheba in it, and right, once yeah. in a while, and she was supposed to have a special relationship with like the ba- main heavy who was played by John Col- Colicos. Right. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole scene. I think it was him or it was Patrick McNee or one of those guys. And they had this whole scene where he was supposed to, like, be hypnotizing her. Yeah. And he's supposed to say something to her, like, feel me inside you or something like that. And they have all the times that they tried to say it and they're just bursting out <laughs> laughing. And just terrible writing. And, and just the innuendos were all over the place, right? So, but it yeah. was, they said they had so much fun with it. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, they have a good time. Okay, but again, we're not going to make this into a love fest. <laughs> that should um, be another show, Battlestar should, Galactica. Actually, it could, it could earn its own show. It could, okay. So, okay because so we can Dawn, talk about the first and, and later on as well, too. Yeah, so. that's true. So, Don, save us from Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that, but okay, save us from Battlestar Galactica. Give us another show that needed to be saved. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll start relatively known and we'll work our way down to obscurity. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> So next, I will go with, and this is what I'm a little leery now about whether there should have been more or not, Max Headroom. Oh. Right. I, I didn't put on my list because I didn't know if I wanted any more Max Headroom. It was so bizarre, I didn't know where it was going. Well, the, <laughs> but I loved it at the time. Well, the yeah. problem with, with it now is we're literally living it. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, they predict it in kind of a weird sideways kind of way. A lot of everything that's wrong with the world now. And I'm like, if they did another season, it'd be the fucking apocalypse. That's just all. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Max. Yeah. We're basically living in Max Hedrum's dark future at this point. Yep. So if they had done another (laughs) season at the time, I think that would have been awesome. But you're right. I don't think it really needed another season. Yeah. I don't say it's borderline. Cause that's and that's one that like I say I desperately hope they never try to remake. I don't think because, they will. It's too quirky. Yeah, and, well, someday they will because it's something that people like know the name, and if that's, true. that's all it takes. But it's got that problem that if you remade it now, the way like entertainment and that is is thought of and constructed, you would kind of be canceling the whole point of the show. Like the whole point of the show is how stupid and horrible entertainment is and it would just become stupid and horrible entertainment pretty much yeah it's it's for those of you who haven't seen it um short version is a it takes place in a dark cyberpunk future in other words the one we're living in right now um Mm -hmm. where uh, everything is pretty much dominated by television because Again, this is more or less pre-internet. They have computers and such, but when the TV show was made, the internet was too new. So everything is still running by television. Like, for example, people vote on with, when it's voting time, for example. Everyone turns their TV to a particular channel that supports the person they're voting for. That's to give an example. And that's how you cast your vote if your TV stays on that channel for five minutes or something like that. And TVs are also two-way. People yeah. can talk, you, you, they can see you and you and as well, so you can actually interact with them. Not the TV show, but the, anyway. So the whole oh, point it's, is, ever it's there's no um, privacy in any it's, way. It's easy to explain because I was having this conversation last week with with Jack, hmm. and Max Hedrum postulates that television becomes like the 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 world because at the time there were there were some concerns about this cable was just starting up you had the diversity of media we talked about in our uh, culture war profiteering episode Mm -hmm. and in max headroom tvs are two-way tvs watch you while you watch them and they're everywhere and you're not allowed to have an off switch you're not allowed to not be watching tv that's exactly what happened except instead of tvs everywhere we have little tiny ones that we carry around with us all the time yep yep exactly and it's it spies on us and it 
votes for us and it tells our corporate overlords what we're doing at all times and, and it's it's fucking max headroom so yeah pretty much and uh, anyway, so what happens is this reporter uh, for Network 23 uh, News, Edison Carter, uh, is investigating a big crime and he tries to escape from a corporate headquarters. And in the process, he gets into an accident. And the last thing he sees is a uh, sign that says Max Headroom, which referring to how far out because he's, he's launched out of a car and he sees the barrier no, he says Max Headroom. He's, hmm? he's on a motorcycle and he's leaving the uh, parking garage. Right, right, sorry. He's and that launched... sign is what hits him in the face as he's going yeah, regardless. <laughs> so, so he gets hit in the face by that. And then, then his consciousness is basically downloaded by this computer genius who actually uses it, uses it as the basis for an AI. And the AI calls itself Max Headroom because that's the last thing Edison Carter saw. Edison yeah. Carter is still very much alive. Um, and they're both played by the amazing Canadian actor Matt Frewer, uh, one of my mm -hmm. favorite actors. And so what happens? This, what happens basically is he continues his uh, crusading reporter ways. He's like the number one crusading hotshot reporter. And um, Max Hedrum becomes his weird alter ego's electronic sidekick who flits around the internet and flits around the system, and yeah. um, helps him out and does all the all these things. Meanwhile, he's also got. Um, Fiona, played by the actress Amanda Pays, who is is Edison Carter's woman in chair, since that is the term I guess we use now, or something like that, who's his uh, partner back at headquarters who can hack into things and stuff. So it's weird. Yeah. He kind of has two hackers backing him. One is an AI and one is like his control. And, it really uh, took off Matt, uh, Matt Frewer's uh, career. That was yeah. the show that really launched him. You know what's really weird? I always mm. got for many years uh, Matt Frewer and Dwight Schultz mixed up because they look <laughs> very similar, you know? Yeah. And so when I saw Matt, like Dwight Schultz was famous for the A-Team and he, and he had that character, uh, Barkley, original Barkley. Barkley on Star Trek, mm -hmm. uh, Next Generation. And for the longest time, I was like, Matt Furrow looks really weird. Like, <laughs> but, it <wasn't, laughs> but it wasn't him at all, but it's very strange. Right. So, but it was, that was a cool show. I really quite enjoyed it. But again, it was one of those things is like, I just can't see it. Like maybe it is because it's so close to reality now. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. couldn't see it being remade at this point. It really was a show of its time. It absolutely yeah. was. It was an absolute show of its time. And uh, it was a, ver a very well done show of its time. Although I don't know how modern audiences would take it. If most people saw it, they'd probably think it was just really, really weird. Yeah. yeah. It, they're living it every day in a slightly different form. Well, plus <laughs> it's British. Yeah, yeah, too. Well, British American, because the original pilot, this is the thing, the original pilot was British. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then they basically decided to make it as an American series. So they remade the pilot using pieces of the original as an American version. And then they, um, yeah, and th th then they went, made a whole TV series of it. It's um, kind of almost season. as weird as Lex. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? The same kind of strangeness. Lex went a lot longer, so it's not on the list, but... Uh... Uh, yeah, it's the very sort of strange things that sort of leave you scratching your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, there it's different. That's for sure. All right. Mm -hmm. So Max Hedrum, I can see your point, Don. I can totally see your point. Um, okay, okay, what's next on the list? Uh, go a little more obscure. I'm going to say one of my favorites, Logan's Run. Yep. I had that as my honorable, honorable mentions. <laughs> oh, Cause... interesting. Why? Well, it, it's, it's. I've never read the book. I, I like the movie. When I was a little kid, this is one of my all-time favorite shows. Mm -hmm. um, watching it recently, you find out about halfway through the first season, they have like a big plot going on mm -hmm. because you find out uh, Francis, his ex-partner who sent to, to recover him, mm -hmm. keeps failing. He gets called back to the city of Domes, and you find out there's a group of old guys that secretly runs it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and when you meet them and they, they're, they're getting into this, you get the impression there is a big story, but they don't tell you what right. what, what it is. But it, it feels like this is really thought up and there's something going on behind the scenes. Right. And it, they never it's, get to It's that. more like the prisoner that way, isn't it? Yeah, it really does become that because um, yeah. uh, Jessica and Logan kind of go back and forth between the, the city of domes and like the last half mm -hmm. of the show, they'll get captured and escape or they get called back and then they'll take off. And it right. really, yeah, it does have that kind of prisoner esque feel to it. Right. Hmm. Okay. Cool. I can totally see that. 
By the way, for those of you who aren't familiar, Logan's Run is a story about a society where when you turn 30, they kill you. Because yeah. it's, a, it's a youth only society. And Logan is a former, they're called Sandman, but effectively police officer and enforcer. Right. Who, when he turns 30, says, Yeah, no, I'm leaving. Bye. Well, no, 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 no. Up. That's not how the story goes. Not it's quite, not. no. Not how the story goes. Not quite. Okay. Yeah. So what happens to him? Well, I, I I should probably let Don tell you just because he brought it up. I don't want to jump in <laughs> where I. No. They're, by the way, they they are remaking it. By the way. So. Yeah, and I, I don't know if I'm happy about that. Yeah, but... we'll see how it's done. But you want to tell yeah. him exactly poorly, what happens? Poorly. Probably. What happens? Yeah. What what happens in the show? Mm-hmm. If is they have this thing called sanctuary, mm-hmm. which is a legend amongst some of the people that you can go and you don't have to go to Carousel, which is how it's this big show that they kill you off. When renew, renew, yep. renew. <laughs> yeah. And this is where the runners, the people who are trying to escape the city, this is where they're they're going. They're trying to find sanctuary. And Logan, he's a Sandman. They're kind of like the police and special forces. The computer that runs the city wants him to find sanctuary. So he still had years left, and it 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 blanks out his clock and yeah, they have a palm gem, which shows various colors depending upon how old they are. And yeah. red is the last one. And when you're blinking red, that's like you're very, you're near the end of your life and you have to get it before it turns black. Mm-hmm. And that was the idea was that hmm. they wanted him to, to fall in with the runners. So they made it, they took away his remaining time. He had like and, two or three years left. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's where he meets Jessica. I think it was Jessica Five, and yeah. they they take off out of the city because she's one of this. Th- there is a name for them for this group that's looking for it. And then they get out of the city and and blah blah blah. And then in the TV show, mm-hmm. you find out what's happened is is Francis, his old partner, that the city is still trying to track Logan down and and bring him back, and. Part of it is because it's secretly being driven by this group of old guys that lives in the basement kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, is the TV series continuing on from the movie, or does it yes. start? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. And they, they, they did some changes, too. Like at the end of the movie, they meet Peter Ustinov as an old yeah. man. And right. he's like, he <laughs> yeah, doesn't have any family left or whatever. But the cool thing about the setup is, is Logan isn't a believer in Sanctuary. He's mm-hmm. just doing a job. He wants to kill them all to begin with. It's his love for Jessica Five and eventually the fact that he sees what happens to people who don't fall in line and how his best friend treats him and stuff like that, that he yeah. eventually becomes a believer in sanctuary and wanting to change. So it's not like he just one day decides, yeah, which, which gives him more of a heroic quality in the respect of sitting there. Because really, it's kind of – you could look at it as sort of a coward's way out. Well, I don't want to die, so I'm going to go to sanctuary. Um, mm. They had to have some way of him sort of – coming to it from a very different perspective so right, yeah mm-hmm. uh, okay no that, okay that's that's better than i thought okay sure it's been too long apparently mm. well it was in the 70s so yeah <laughs> yeah i probably was watching it when i was like six seven or eight years old so, i just want to part- throw throw out another uh honorable mention in the same kind of quality there because it, it also came from the movie planet of the apes oh, okay yes. They did a Planet of the Apes series that yeah. could have been much better if they had more time to work with it, um, but they didn't have a chance. That came out a couple years earlier. That was in, like, yeah. 74, but that would have been fun, too. Go mm. ahead there, Don. Because the Planet of the Apes show was another one. That was pretty good. Yeah. Yes. So, And then how about, for another, we'll go obscure. I'll go with UFO. Nice. That's not that obscure, but I totally agree. <laughs> Technically, they did do a second season of it. It's just called Space 1999. Yeah. <laughs> you mean Project UFO? No, he's talking about UFO. The oh, okay. British TV show. The British TV show. Isn't that, isn't that the same thing? No, no it wasn't Project, believe... Project, Project UFO. UFO. Oh, sorry, go. Oh, it was a, uh, that was um, like a, a semi-documentary series from the 70s, wasn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah, was, no, no, yeah, Project UFO was a whole, you're right, uh, that's like Project Blue Book kind of Project thing talking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right, I do remember UFO, it was, that was the, the Gary Anderson yeah. uh, and Sylvia mm-hmm. Anderson live show, that was awesome, that was very yeah. cool, that would have been neat, yeah, the aliens yeah. were neat. Yeah, yeah, and it was another one that they just kind of got to explaining what the aliens were, and right. then it stopped, so you never, and 
Rob is right. Space 1999 was supposed to be a sequel series, but really? I forget why. Yeah, at the last minute, they kind of they uh, they rearranged, mcated it, and made it its own thing. Wow. I suspect, and I don't know this. This is not fact, so someone can write in on the site and correct me. Um, but I think it might have had something to do with like uh, syndication deals with the United States or something like that. That right. they were yeah. going to they were willing to put American money into it, but they weren't willing to sponsor UFO season two. They wanted a new show. Right. And so what they did is they took, well, we have all this moon stuff. Okay, let's just rejigger it and make it about the moon gets sent off into space. Because originally UFO season two was supposed to just be set on the moon base, but it was still supposed to be around the Earth. And it was yeah. still supposed to be them fight, continuing the fight of the aliens and everything, right? Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. But they said, okay, no, no, now the moon is miraculously warping all around the universe randomly, apparently. And um, is. Well, yeah. Yeah. It gets blown up by uh, nuclear waste, explodes in their dump, and throws the moon out in the space. Yes. Cool. But somehow they keep <laughs> going at faster than light speeds on a regular yes. basis. Yeah. <laughs> which I could it's never called... understand even as a kid. There's the fiction of science fiction. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> but to be fair, Gary and Sylvia Anderson were like the people to go for sci-fi in the 70s for television. Mm -hmm. They yeah. just did everything. It's amazing the amount of shows they did. Yep. So... Well, not to know. mention, mm -hmm. sorry, I was going to say, not to mention, you know, Thunderbirds. Yeah. Thunderbirds are oh, go! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep, they went. Bye. And that was another two-season one that could have gone on further. Yeah. And Captain Scarlet, right? And mm -hmm. all that yeah, stuff. I, sorry. I kind of preferred the Captain Scarlet because it had that weird kind of horror aspect to it. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, Thunderbirds, I always found a little bit dull. I just yeah. couldn't quite, I, I mean, I appreciated the model work. But yep. if I watched too much of it, I fell asleep. Even oh, yeah, the did, model, the better. transitions from the model stuff was really slow. You know? yeah. Like, it was, yeah. yeah, yeah, it just <laughs> wasn't very lively. But Captain Scarlet was okay. Yeah, Captain yeah. Scarlet was definitely okay. And, um, yeah, but and UFO, of course, was about a secret organization named Shadow, which yep. basically was uh, fighting mysterious alien invaders that were, and were doing all these different uh, schemes mostly to harvest human organs and to do other weird things to humanity and so shadow and the cool part was that it wasn't just a bunch of you know random agents wandering around there were several teams of them like there was a moon yeah. base that had space fighters and there was a um there was the what were they called the sub fighters no oh that was a skydiver the skydiver and there were more than one skydiver too and they think mm -hmm. these and they were there these were. submarines that the part of them could detach and fly, and they would yep, use right. them to and they would use them to battle and shoot down the UFOs. Then they had the other land teams that would go in in these special vehicles to recover the UFO and everything. And they had the they shadow had like these, yeah, and they had this special stuff. If anyone has actually played the game XCOM, you what you're looking at is a UFO game basically. It's it's XCOM. Cool. XCOM changed it a little bit, but uh, in fact, the original XCOM game, I believe, was made in England. It was called UFO. It was wow. literally meant to be a UFO game. You have it's a UFO TV series. It's it is different because they do explain what the aliens are and why they do what they do. In XCOM, right. yeah. No, in in UFO. Okay. Oh, yeah. it is different. Actually, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because do you guys know what the deal with the aliens is? Hey, no. Don't tell, don't tell our audience. <laughs> let, 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 let them go watch it dude go watch them, it go, go watch go watch it because it ufo is great because it's got all these cool vehicles but it's some of it's really creepy and weird and it's just yeah. and it's not the puppets. aliens creep the heck out of me yeah yeah exactly yeah. oh yeah because there's 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 a thing in the first episode mm -hmm. where uh you find out one of the characters on their team he's hunting the aliens because his sister is missing mm -hmm. right and at the end of the first episode they find like her lungs because one of the aliens has them. Yeah. So crazy. Crazy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it and, and it gets it gets weirder from there, but yeah, that's another one that I would have liked to have definitely seen more of. Yeah. Wow. It, yep, exactly. Oh, UFO was yeah, it definitely one that needed another season. Um mm -hmm. all right, and we can't say neither of us can say or none of us can say Space 1999 of course cuz it actually did get two seasons. Yes, it did. So we're so we're not going to go there. All right. So Don, what's another one? Uh, I'll take a weird twist. This is one that it's another one of these weird obscure shows that apparently everybody kind of remembers and loved, but then it vanished. And I'm going to go with "It's Your Move." 
<laughs> I don't remember that at all. I don't either. You guys don't? It's your move. It's your I, move. I, I remember I vague. I never remember the name, but I actually no, I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> oh, cuz it was uh Okay, what is it? It was it's a comedy. It was uh oh, what was the guy's name? Jason Bateman. It was like his first series. Wow. And the premise was uh him and his mom, his mom, I think she just got like the divorced or divorced or such. They had moved into this apartment and one of the other guys, like the guy across the hall, had a thing for his mom. And it was played by the guy who played uh, the first husband of Married with Children uh, yes, next door. Was. I remember it now. I'm looking yeah. at it. Yes. Okay, I and, know what you're talking about. Yeah. And and what the series was, it was the two of them constantly, like, pulling pranks and getting each other in trouble. Wow. Yeah. No, I never saw this show. So, no? yes. No. No. I 85. 84, 85. There you go. Yeah. yeah 18 episodes. Yeah. And... Yeah, because, yeah, it was just this constant war between the son and the mother's boyfriend, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it was anybody who saw it, like, they vaguely remember it, and then you mentioned it, they're like, oh, yeah, that was, I did, I love that show. <laughs> yep, I can see that. It has an 8.2 out of 10 on IMDb, so obviously that was well done. 18 episodes. Look for those. Sitcom. But yeah, okay. No, no. I, I do have big memories of this. Actually, I do. Mm, uh, cool. And All right. So how about you, Jack? What's another one for your list? Okay. Are we going honorable mention? Or are we going for the last uh, the last of well, my let's, top let's 10? Go for the, let's go for the top 10, and then we'll okay. do honorable mentions. Okay. Okay. So my number six is Otherworld. That mm-hmm. was in 1985. Do you remember that show? Vaguely, yeah. Yeah, vaguely. So it was... Yeah, it was sort of like um, it was designed where people literally uh, these this family or something got sent into an alternate Earth and they got thrown there. And um, the the guy, uh, the actor Jonathan Banks, the guy who plays Mike in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, and he's he's been in a ton of different stuff. Um, wise guy, he he was in as well. He played the bad guy kind of thing. But they, they, they were touring the, the, the Great Pyramid of Giza, and then they're thrown into this parallel universe where humans are divided into strictly defined zones and androids mine for radioactive oh, material okay. and all that kind of stuff. So it was, this, it was this really strange kind of world that I would have loved to have gone into more, but that it never did. And they kind of did a similar – and this was on my honorable mention so I can twin this. They kind of did a similar kind of story thing with the Fantastic Journey back in – 1977 if you remember that hmm. one right. where these people are like on the bermuda triangle and their and their ship gets sucked into like a, a another wor- another dimension another world kind of thing right so mm-hmm. i kind of like those kind of shows that that look at alternate earths and like throw you in there and, and have a really detailed kind of vision of what it's going to be so that's why i had other world on there and it didn't last very long it was a very short show yeah. but I, I quite enjoyed yeah. it. there you go and then Number seven was one of my childhood favorites was Voyagers with an exclamation mark. Okay, yeah. Remember that? With John yeah. Aaron Hexham, yep. right, as uh, Phineas Bogg. And uh, he had this timepiece called an Omni, and they would, like, fall from the sky and go from place to place. And he had this one little kid guy that he picked yep, up yep. somewhere down the mm-hmm. line. And it suffered from the fact that it didn't have enough money to actually go to various different places. They always kind of ended up in like 1970s <laughs> era. You know, all of time yeah. and space, and they're always heading like modern day time. But it was a fun, just a fun adventure show. And I really quite liked it. And it only lasted a season, unfortunately. And then like John Eric Hexham went to like cover up that show and yeah. then killed, killed himself accidentally. It was just heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah um, he was. He had a lot of potential as an actor. He had he a lot of potential, lead. and it was the stupidest way too. He was like on a set of a commercial, and he had like a handgun with blanks in it, and he was talking about how his his new wife was driving him crazy or something like that, joking, and he mm-hmm. pulled the trigger of the blank right against his head, and blanks will still kill you, ladies and gentlemen. If it's that close, don't don't yeah. do that. It's the it's the force. It put him in a coma, and they had to pull the plug. It was just like a horrible situation. So that was Voyagers. Great show. And if you listen to the Sonic Society, there's like a whole season where I do like a Voyagers take off <laughs> with with um, with uh, David. We fall from the sky and uh, use a, an Omni like device to take us from audio drama to audio drama. So, <laughs> so that, that, yeah. 
I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, Number eight. People are going to groan for this one, but I think it could have been done much better if it had a really good, um, Uh, a really good budget and it could be really remade as, as an, as a decent show. The star lost. Oh, okay. 1973 Uh, Canadian sci-fi show. uh, Right. Um, (laughs) Star. Oh, oh, there's some groaning there. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, dude. I had to. Oh, like the world's most boring science fiction series ever. I, it I was terrible. It was um, Keir Dulia and uh, it was Robin Ward. So mm-hmm. I was interested in that. But right, think yeah. about this. If I told you the storyline, it would be interesting. Here you have this um, these people living in this like 19th century kind of community where one and, 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 uh, a love, uh, couple can't get together because of, you know, Romeo and Juliet kind of ideas. And they accidentally find out that they opened this portal that never existed. And they're not in this community. They're on a spaceship, that community and the entire earth has been dead for centuries. And mm-hmm. here you have a spaceship that's filled with all of these different communities that don't know they're on a spaceship heading towards a star because the people who were running this huge arc mm-hmm. were hit by a meteor shower, destroyed the bridge, and has thrown the ship onto a collision course with a star. So yeah. these people who have no technology experience whatsoever have to try to find a way to stop the ship from, be- from being destroyed and find where it's supposed to go without knowing what they're doing. Yeah. It's a really cool idea. You know who it created is, yeah. it? Harlan it cool. Ellison. Yeah. Mm. So you could imagine that if it was done well, even today, if it was done mm. as a Netflix series, it could actually be a really interesting series. Okay. I'll buy that. Yeah. I, okay. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I mean, but it is 6.4 out of 10 on, yeah. on, on <laughs> IMDb. Well, they, and that's being charitable, I think. <laughs> they, they, they must edit it because if it was like, Harlan Ellison really wrote it. There should be like more murder, drug use, and somebody has a talking dog. Exactly. (laughs) Well, to be fair, um, Chekhov was in it. Walter Koenig was in it a couple Hmm. of times as sort of like a foil at one point. It was like his his big role. Yeah, wasn't Hmm. James doing it as well? Might have been. I don't remember that. I was I I was quite young at the time, I have to say. (laughs) Very young at the time. And I think when I was a very young kid, yeah, I saw like reruns because it's a Canadian series, so I saw reruns Absolutely. of it. But yeah, you wanted I I, to or not? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. But I'm pretty sure I thought when I was a kid that it was actually British, uh, because it looked like all the British sci-fi of the time. Like it looked like it could have been Doctor Who, among other things, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know what drove me crazy was the computer, which was played by William Osler. It's this guy with like this 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 typical. Uh, sort of scientist looking guy with a beard and speckles and he would talk mm-hmm. like this and he would always <laughs> phrase his words as if he were running out of air i had professors <laughs> like that yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> but it was it was still a, it was still a pretty interesting show no, shall we go for the last two in my it. top 10 list sure let's do it Number nine, which should really be down to like number three, but I, I just didn't know how to place it in because I love this show. I thought it was much better than the X Files. I thought it was mm-hmm. really, really cool, and it got canceled way too soon. And mm-hmm. it had the ability; it had the uh, first look at Seven of Nine playing a Russian spy. For those people who know what's going on, it was called Dark Skies. Oh, uh, okay. And it was an American UFO conspiracy theory show, and it was like eighteen episodes. The first pilot was – it was such a cool idea where they literally started from like Roswell and they showed you like through the decades that mm-hmm. certain people were trying to figure out what was going on, that there was this huge conspiracy about UFOs that was running everything. And so the people who were involved like literally started off as like an FBI agent or something. I forgot how it's worked, but but he mm-hmm. was losing everything and they were on the run because they were constantly – you know, uh, in trouble. And so the seven of nine character, forget her name as well at the show. She was like trying to kill him at first, but then because they were trying to kill her, she, they ended up becoming sort of unwilling partners kind of thing to try to mm-hmm. figure this stuff out. The whole mm-hmm. tagline is history as we know it is a lie. So it was right. a very cool idea. I Actually, thought that was a really cool show. Yeah. I got it. Cause I think what killed that one was uh, it came out 
kind of at the the height of X Files popularity, and there were a million shows like that. You're right. But Dark Skies, it was it was done a lot like it reminded me of like say like a seventies, early eighties show. Right. In that there wasn't as much angst and whining and there was a lot of meat to it. Like pl- they actually had plots. Yeah. It was characters grimacing at each other for an hour. And I think <laughs> I think to the, the audience of the time, it kind of it kind of felt off. Right. And that's why it sort of got mixed up because yeah, there were so many of those shows because that was the show wasn't it like was sure. it the was it the one where you find out like the beatles were an alien plot it's been so long it was there's, 96 97 but i think you're right i think yeah there was that aspect too i'll have to check that out there's a 60s rock and roll ep- episode and i think it was like the beatles you find out that they were part of an alien conspiracy or something <laughs> but i mean you're right there was a ton of those shows like another one of my uh, honorable mentions was first wave Right. Oh, okay. So yeah. they had a ton of those aliens, sort of, uh, you know, attack uh, or landing or you know taking over in one way or another. So it's interesting, mm-hmm. all of it. My number ten before we get too far down those rabbit holes was John Doe. Oh, okay. And it came out the same time as Brimstone. It was like two thousand and two, two thousand and three, right. and it was literally it was. I think the guy who played John Doe, it was also in Prison Break later on, and um, he. The idea was he wakes up in, off the coast of Seattle, completely doesn't know who he is. He's totally colorblind for some reason, extremely mm. claustrophobic, and they just call him John Doe. And so, again, it's a, a bunch of conspiracies because people are always trying to – he has this ability. Like, he has all the total knowledge of, of human, human knowledge he can mm-hmm. co- bring to mind, but he doesn't know why or how. And so they haven't really – there's a whole conspiracy international organization called the Phoenix Organization, which is like watching every one of his moves and the whole bit. And it was just one of the things like, you know, this could have gone four or five seasons so I could figure out what's happening. But it got nailed too quickly, and it was it was over kind of thing. So, hmm. so that was my main top ten. Okay, Because there's two on your list that I think are kind of – have been redone. Hmm. Because there's one, uh, there's a show on now about this woman who has no memory, but she's got tattoos that supposedly tell some story about some like crime network or something, and she's got oh, like cool. weird skills. And it's it's a current show. I can't remember what it's called. And hmm. you mentioned Voyagers. There's a show on now called Voyagers. I've seen ads. I haven't seen it. It kind of now just from the little bits i've seen it looks it reminded me a lot of the one from the 80s and i'm wondering if it's some kind of remake or some kind of like copy hmm. or what interesting voyagers 2016 i assume is the one you're talking no no wait that's not, that's not the right one uh, let me take a look um there's one called yeah, 2016 there's one called voyagers yeah, well, there's the one in Voyagers, but that one is a... That's a documentary, that's a yeah. documentary. Mm. I don't right. think it's called Voyager. I think it's called something else. All right, there's um, one called Time Something, like Time Travelers or something. And there's okay. that's recently out, or Time Something, that I know that's out there for a similar kind of thing. And and not exactly the same setup, but same, yeah. I, I, I think I know what you're talking about. I saw it on Netflix, too. Yeah, because that, that show Voyagers, with the exclamation point... It was really popular, and when, when the guy died, they, they, there was a big debate about what to do because it was a popular show, and it's another one that a lot of people, say especially our age, really remember and actually remember really liking. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it was canceled, though, first. It was canceled was before he died because I think he was in another show called Cover Up or something. Yeah, yeah but yeah. – And that was afterwards, right? Like, it was you, very much like a scarecrow and Mrs. King sort of setup, which they did a yeah, ton yeah. of those things, right? You know, that yeah. kind of uh, fall in love, don't fall in love kind of thing that was going on. Yeah, I remember yeah. that they had the theme song of uh, I Need a Hero by Bob. Yeah, that's, that's where it came from. Or at least that, I think that was – they used it anyway, and that popularized they, I think that they song. used it. I think it became yeah. more popular, but I think they, she had it out beforehand. But that's just okay. – it could be yeah, wrong. But because that was from like the Footloose soundtrack. Yeah. Oh, what was it? Okay, then there we yeah. go. Yeah, but they definitely used. That's the first time I remember hearing that song. Was that was that series? Mm-hmm. Cool. Like the opening to that series. Huh. Now, sense. now considering that considering that I'm I'm only got about another uh, twenty minutes with you guys, 
Yeah. Do you mind if I skip through some other list stuff that I have? Because I had a sure, time. Cool. Yeah, sure. Let's hear it. Here's a couple more of my um, of my honorary mentions, and I apologize for uh, jumping in. I'm going to leave Quark for for Don to talk about. I'm sure that's, <laughs> that's it. it. That was in my honorable mention. That's all Alien Nation. Alien Nation was in my honorable mention. It was one of those shows that came off of the movie, which was quite well done. Yes. And I didn't expect the television show to be good, but every time I sat down and watched it, I was just really amazed at how interesting that they, they had of the newcomer um, uh, culture and how mm. they utilized it within our culture and how it was done in such a way. Like I remember one episode, for example, they were doing like this Russian roulette kind of game where mm. they had like this spinning spigot full of water. Yeah. And and the, they 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 would uh, salt water for them was like battery acid. Yeah, so yeah. one of them had salt water and the rest had regular water. So if they were hit with water, they were like screaming, thinking they were going to be killed, but they weren't. And it was a big rush. And so uh, it was a really fascinating show. And I, I, yeah. I it was disappointing that it was it was canceled when it was um, flash forward. Another interesting show that was developed right. by Brandon Braga. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, from Robert J. Sawyer, who I think you should yes. have on the show, Canadian sci-fi. He'd probably oh, he'd probably do an interview. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, we'll um, ask. Mm. I have him on Facebook, so. Okay, I do too. Um, there you go. Uh, Highwayman, which you guys mentioned before. Oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah. that that's on my other list. That's right, <laughs> Sam J. Jones. You don't want to see another one of those. <laughs> no. Space well, above and beyond. Oh, you know, I love that behind. show. I yeah, love I, that show. I hated that you did, show. You hated that show? Yeah, I was not I, a fan either. I I love I love the military side of it. I thought it was I thought there was some really bad stuff, but I thought it had some really good potential. If they did it today, it would do a really good job with it. Mm. Um, it's mm -hmm. I'm I'm interested why you didn't like it because it's it's very much like um like the the famous show with the bugs, you know, the Robert E. Heinlein Starship Troopers mm. Starship Troopers style. Not just style. I think they might have even been using some of the props and uh, stuff from that. Actually, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe not. Because mm. after that movie, those props got used in a lot of TV series and stuff. Yes, they for did. sure. But uh, that, get them. Hmm? Go. Cool. Sorry. That's all right. Um, and and I, I I just really I thought it was a really for the time they weren't doing anything like that on television. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, Perversions mm. of Science, which I absolutely adored as an anthology series. Hmm. Did you ever see those? Yeah. No. They were a lot of fun. Know. That was like an it's, HBO one, wasn't it? Yeah, it was an HBO series that was kind of like um, based off the weird science comic books. So it was a bit like like the Crypt, Tales from the Crypt kind of style. Wow. Yeah. But it was all sci-fi style. And I remember like one of my favorites was the War, in the World, War of the Worlds thing where they actually have like they're all dressed up at a party for, uh, for Halloween – and they hear War of the Worlds, War of the Worlds comes on as a broadcast. Right. Mm -hmm. And and two of the guys were there at the party with their girlfriends, kill everybody at the party, pull off their masks and say, Who told them we were here? <laughs> right. So they start running because they think that their whole cover's been blown, right? Right. So they decide that they're gonna go to Orson Wells and kill and kill him because he's the one who threw the cover. And they end up getting killed because the guy who plays Orson Wells, um, I, I, and famous actor, he uh, he he played uh, in uh, Princess Bride. He played the prince, um, you know who I'm talking about, the the crazy yeah. guy. Um, he's actually from Saturn, and he's trying to out them so that right. they can take over from Saturn. It was a really hilarious and ridiculous <laughs> script. Beautiful fun. Um, mm. Crusade, which you guys will probably kill me for, but Crusade was really a, an interesting takeoff from Babylon 5 that I wish they could have spent more time working because I think they didn't mm. have a chance to. I'll uh, if I agree with you on that one. I there you do. go. Uh, Roughnecks, which was my only animated selection oh, from okay. Starship Trooper Chronicles. I thought the animation was utterly amazing, and it was an interesting takeoff from the Starship Troopers where they would continue. Well, because it was, it was more like the book than the movie. Yes, yes. They even added the skinnies for that one. Absolutely. Going way back, Manimal. Oh, God. Which everybody <laughs> knows but doesn't remember. So what? it was kind of a fun little uh, <laughs> you, single series. You had series. to include that, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> again. Manimal. Everyone, again, everyone remembers it, though. Everybody right. remembers yeah. it. It was fun for people. Earth 2. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't a big <laughs> fan, but okay, yeah, I do remember it. 
I enjoyed it during the time. It really unraveled quickly, and it could have been done a lot better. I think actually mm. by them introducing the aliens that they did at the time, I think it took away from it. Right. Uh, Auto Man. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> that that goes with Manimal. That always goes with Manimal. It always yes, goes it with Manimal. Okay, um, I'm coming. I'm coming near the end of mine. The Time <laughs> Tunnel is my earliest one oh, that I wouldn't mind okay. seeing again. That and Land and uh, Land of the Giants. I, I wouldn't mind okay. seeing that. But honestly, Land of the Giants made two seasons, so that wouldn't work. So that for reason. And here it is, the one that is the cheesiest and the worst that I think for kids at least it was a lot of fun. Far Out Space Nuts. Oh God. <laughs> Bob hey, Denver yo, and Chuck McCann. Yeah, yeah, don't. <laughs> it's, it's what happened to Bob Denver after Gilligan's Island. He couldn't get any other work. And his new skipper character is Chuck McCann. And instead right. of the minnow, they're in space. That's yeah, about it. it. It's, it's about another, all you need to know. It's <laughs> another 70s, like a uh, Sid Marty Croft show. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, I think, no, I think I did see that as a kid. I do remember that now. Yes. Because <laughs> because doesn't it always start with the the opening is them cleaning the ship and then yeah. one of them hits they think it's lunch but they yes. uh, but they press launch instead yeah. and so yes. yeah that's exactly and th- it's a bunch yeah. of you know it's a bunch of sort of silly skits skits that are put together of you know mis mistake and stuff here and there absolutely right. now I I had a list and I don't want to go all the way through it because I'm going to give Don some time before I have to go but I had a list of things that I was looking up and I went, what the hell is this? And I would like to see it. So, Mm -hmm. but before I, just to start that off, because I was talking to my friend Lothar before we did this conversation and I was telling him we were doing this tonight. And he said, did you ever see the Phoenix? And I went, the Phoenix, I've never heard of that. And that's one of the shows that he loved and wanted to see more of kind of thing. And it starred the actor who played like Con Noonien Sung's, son in yeah. uh, Re- revenge of uh, the wrath of Khan in the star trek movie and uh, yeah. judson scott i think is his name judson scott so mm-hmm. um that was the show you can you tell me a bit about that don because you said you remember that one yeah because when i was a kid i liked it the it, it was another one of those ones because if you remember this is when von dynakin had put out chariot to the gods right mm-hmm. So the mid seventies, late seventies, there was this big humans are actually descended from aliens kind of thing. He was one of these like alien beings that had been awoken in our world and he was looking for his mate. Okay. And he had like an amulet that would lead him to her and he had some like weird alien powers. And I remember there was somebody there was another guy after him, and I don't remember I think he was another like evil alien guy, but the show didn't last long enough to really get into that. Mm-hmm. That's a whole like that was a whole era where we had a yep. ton of different shows where aliens yep. were on Earth, like Starman and the powers, powers of, of Matthew, Matthew Star, Star uh, yeah. and later on Roswell and stuff like that. There's a ton, yep. but Roswell's a little more different because it's more like specifically alien esque yep. kind of thing. But Benji and the Alien Prince. There you go. Um, yeah. yeah, that's weird. I wonder what what sort of starts that kind of. Um, like, why, why is that a big thing? Why were people interested in the aliens among us? Well, it was, it was Von Dynakin. It was the, uh, it was when his theories came out, mm-hmm. and it, it was a big thing. And that's why you said, like, Battlestar Galactica is based on that idea. Right. Yeah, it is. Like, there were tons of shows. There that... are those who believe that life here began out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, it is, and that's exactly it. And mm-hmm. you, there was a lot of things like this. This is where um, uh, Marvel Comics did the Eternals. The Eternals was directly oh, inspired. Oh, right, right, right. Hmm. I can see that. I can totally see that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right, Don. What did you have in your list? <laughs> uh, what else what did I... you have? Oh, I got a bunch. Let's go a little bit obscure. Uh, one one show that I used to love as a kid that I used to watch my grandmother, she was a huge fan, was Madam's Place. Madam's Place. Wow, I that think. is obscure. Even I don't I know have, that one. I don't Do, know what that is either. Do you remember <laughs> Wayland Flowers and Madam? What? Wayland Flowers. <laughs> he, was, he was a ventriloquist, and Madam was his puppet. Oh, he yes, like, yes. Yeah, I remember movie. Madam the Puppet, yes. Yeah, well, it was a oh, TV thing, show. Yeah based on her that what it was is she had a talk show so i've seen it compared to uh it's gary shandling show because right. she would do interviews on this talk show with actual famous people as themselves and right. then it was this it was the sitcom 
about her and her mansion with all of her like servants and friends and family and stuff. <laughs> wow. That's almost spitting image style, you know, puppetry kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. she would, but she was the only puppet on it. And yes. they never treated her like a puppet. She was actually like like a person. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Very cool. I, I never saw the show, but I remember Madonna. No. Yes. Yes. Was, that, she was a pop culture figure for a while, which is where that came from, obviously. Yeah. yeah. The, yes. the show was the show was on pretty late. It was on like midnight. Cause we used to watch it after the news. Because for a network show at the time, it was really, really risque. Right. Oh, okay. Strangely enough, so were the Muppets for a while. Yeah, they were not like this. This 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 no. was. Hmm. And and. Yeah, I remember that. It was I remember it was pretty funny, especially cuz I was like 10. <laughs> right. That's great. <laughs> Very cool. Mm. Okay, so what's a, let's hit his with another obscure oddity done. Okay, another comedy that I used to like was uh The Duck Factory. <laughs> the Duck Factory. Oh, The Duck Factory. Ah. That's a, like uh Jim Carrey's first uh series. Yes, wasn't that a skit show though? No, the uh, what it was is he was oh. he was an animator, and the Duck Factory was the studio that did uh, what the hell is it? The Dippy Duck Show. The Dippy Duck Dippy Show, Dippy apparently. Duck yeah. yeah, yeah. I think there was like five episodes. No, that's looking online. There's thirteen episodes because that's wow. the show. I there's an episode with one of the older guys who uh, they're right working the script, and they get to the part, and like the young guys, like, what is this arg? What is arg? I've never. And they say it's an expression it, meaning um anger or discontent because there's a part halfway through where i think they're interviewing the one animator's like his ex-wife and she's telling all these horrible things and he's looking at the tv going arg 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 i I remember that that specific scene i remember from like way Mm. back when (laughs) right that's crazy i'm gonna have to check that out i'm sure they'll have it on youtube or something at some point you can probably find an episode or two somewhere yeah 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 Yeah, that's very cool i've heard it's actually been released on home video but i i've never seen it and i don't know very much about it cool very cool okay what's another one don (laughs) we'll go with the uh another one of my favorites the george carlin show (laughs) did that only last one season uh officially yeah because i remember as i recall it got shown for a bit it got canceled it came back mm-hmm. but i think that it's technically just one season that it right wow i it i remember it seemed like it was on for quite a while because it was on just long enough for me to decide that it was one of those shows that was so funny but so depressing at the same time you could yeah. make so much of it that's it why was... i stopped watching it because it was, it was bleak it was so bleak. Oh my god! Really? Yeah, but but I I kind of got a kick out of that because I again we were just coming out of like the happy family sitcom and it it mm. it it wasn't it wasn't like married with children goofy it wasn't like Roseanne obnoxious it was bleak. Like yeah. the, the the moral of this story is that life sucks and you're all going to die one day. <laughs> But it was funny though. The, like um, the one scene I remember was he was a cab driver, mm-hmm. and um, this guy was gonna gonna was holding him up. He points a gun at his head and he's like, "Give me all your money. I, I know how to use this." And like, oh, point and squeeze. There's a difficult skill to master. And, <laughs> and, he won't, and he's just like egging this guy on, eh? And it's like, well, you better hope you kill me because if you don't, I will come after you in my diminished capacity and finish you off. And it's like, wow, that's. But yeah, it was, it was, it was, oh man, it was so, but it was funny, but it was George Carlin. If you ever heard his, his comedy, it's kind of that same idea. Yeah. Wow. It was Fox back in the Married with Children days. So they were just kind of throwing anything out there and seeing what worked and what didn't. Yeah. Especially some weird stuff. Yeah. And a ton of their stuff did, you know, they were pretty lucky with that. So. Oh yeah. Well, again, they were going for the youth demographic. They were trying to shake things up and they succeeded. They Simpsons, made... X-Files, yep. huge. Right. Oh yeah. All that stuff. Uh, in Living Color was also yep. in that period as well. Uh, Parker Matt... Lewis Can't Lose. Mm. Mad, uh, Mad the TV. show Mad, Mad TV. Yeah. Yep. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mad TV came a little bit later. I thought it was originally in Living Color, and then eventually yes. it kind of yeah. 
fizzled yeah, and then you're Mad right. TV replaced it. If I remember yeah. right. Yeah. You're absolutely but, right. Yeah, still 90s stuff. Still 90s stuff. Okay. It's amazing. Um, they used to say that, you know, you watch – you at that time, you watched uh, Saturday Night Live for the guests and Mad TV for the sketches. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, used, that, yeah. I used to do it opposite because I'd watch Mad TV and right when it was done, you turned it to uh, Saturday Night Live and it would be Norm MacDonald doing the news. Gotcha. Right. And right, I was right. that was the only thing on Saturday Night Live I liked, but I loved when Norm MacDonald did the news. For obvious <laughs> reasons. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it is very cool. So I'm afraid Jack's got to go, I believe. I've hmm. still got about five, seven minutes, if you don't mind. I oh, can, no, no. I can you stick can, around I'm, for that. I, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not kicking you're not out, kicking Jack. Out. You're, well, you're, welcome, you're welcome to stay. Um, A couple actually, of very gonna... quick shows that, that lasted two seasons that should have gone longer. V, the remake, I think that they were trying to move towards something that would have been interesting. Jericho, mm-hmm. which was really well done. Uh, Project UFO, mm-hmm. which I really quite liked. Rome, okay. which had all of its sets burned down. Space <laughs> Academy as a kid, I quite enjoyed. Mm-hmm, the Invaders, yeah. which was a lot of fun. And uh, although it was Greg Evigan, I kind of didn't mind Tech War. Because <laughs> uh. <laughs> like, here's the sh- sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say because I can raise you another one that lasted two seasons that should have probably gone longer. What was that? Oh, Get a Life. <laughs> Get a Life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There were stuff that was regular. Again, I was just I was looking for the sci-fi bent because of of, of the D- Department of Nerdly Affairs. But we could have mm-hmm. we could have gone for a lot. I'm glad I did this, or we would have been four hours in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell me about some of these shows that I came up with. I'm just going to rattle them off and tell me if you know them and whether or not they're worth watching. Okay. 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 Sure. Under the Mountain. Don't know it. 1981, teenage twin siblings Rachel and Theo on a summer vacation in Auckland visit their aunt and uncle, meet a certain Mr. Jones, a mysterious man, and help them find that they got lost or something. Weird. Um, Outlaws. Five cowboys are sent forward in time from 1899 to 1986 where they start their own detective agency. Oh, I think that 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 one's mediocre. That because that starred Rod Taylor, William Lucking, Richard Roundtree, and Charles Napier, which sounds like a really cool cast. Yeah. So, Star I'm... Cops. Oh, Star Cops is one of those things. If you watch it, you'll be like, "Is this really cool or incredibly dumb? I can't <laughs> put my okay. finger on it." Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Star Maidens. Oh, uh, the, Don't that know was. That one. That, yeah, that's, that's that's the one. Isn't that the one where uh, men on their planet are referred to as dinks? Something like that. I guess yeah. I haven't seen it. I don't know. I heard about it. What? Um, the Star Maidens. Okay. Yeah, Star Maidens. The, uh, the, pi- the pilot's pretty good, but the show, because it's another kind of like one note show. Right. Uh-huh. So after the pilot, it kind of, uh, I know where this it, is it going. Got a, it got a DVD release too. Holy crap. <laughs> a lot of stuff. See, Sapphire and Steel got a DVD release. Yes. See, part of the reason for me to name all this is to really put a lot of work on Rob for for hyperlinking everything we mentioned. Say, my, my my list for this show is going to be incredibly long. Quartermass, Quartermass. 1979. Quarter, the 79 is like the remake. Yeah, uh, it was a 50s one. The 79 one, it's not. It was bad. a movie originally, right? It was three. Oh, there was okay. a TV yeah. show in the 50s. There was a remake oh. in the 70s. There was a remake relatively recent with uh. Tenet. Really. Yeah. Okay. Uh, by the way, it's Quatermass. Quatermass. Okay. That's a Quatermass. Yeah. Fair enough. I used to call it Quatermass too, but apparently I discovered when the Tenant one came out. I think it was I. I discovered it's actually Quatermass. Quatermass. Okay. Yeah. Cool enough. Salvage one, which sounds interesting. Oh, that's on my other list, actually. Okay. Well, I I loved it when I was a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's one. the The whole premise is it's this guy. He he owns a junkyard. Mm-hmm. And he 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 ends up getting one of the old style like saturn V rocket bodies right and he gets it his head if he can go to the moon he can recover all the space stuff they left out there bring it back and sell it for a lot of money right cool it's, it's andy griffith stars in it ha huh. the pilot's kind of interesting right mm-hmm. it was like the farmer astronaut was a movie that came out a few years ago it's basically that gotcha but the show falls apart because there's only so many plots you can do with an old style yeah. rocket yeah right Right. So, The Secret Empire, 1979 as well. 
that's oh crap that isn't that about oh very a oh, very vague memory okay, okay. Hold on a sec. yeah because i think i i think it's another one that's kind of mediocre okay that's oh yes i remember this one okay because the secret the secret empire was part of the uh there was a show called uh cliffhangers mm. okay and there were yeah. three series that were part of it it was and they showed it was like was it an hour or half hour and basically they like showed each week and they showed you like 10 minutes of of a show for example it was like a whole oh, bunch of little okay. ones all together it was this weird anthology show cliffhanger is one of them one of them was dracula okay and then there was a third <laughs> and um yeah it was and it was these were homages and i believe cliff yeah i believe the secret empire is one of the three that was cool. part of the uh the curse of yeah, curse of dracula there it was and the last one was was it the girl who saved the world i think it was the girl who saved the world was the third one maybe wow oh yeah, stop cause... susan williams stop susan williams yes there it is there you go <laughs> was it was the was part of cliffhangers and yeah so cliffhangers was a uh, cool yeah it was this idea it was a very cool idea actually it was mm-hmm. a great idea but yeah and yeah they were 20 minutes okay it was an hour long so they were basically like 20 minutes each or something something like cool. that anyway whatever all right so i'm gonna the time time empress sounded interesting only in the fact that it sounded like it came at the same time as something like um uh uh, fantasy island uh right. time the time empress is about a train that took you back to your favorite time of your life oh yeah so, that was i don't know i haven't shoot. seen it i just saw that as it's so it was interesting uh, i'm just gonna rattle some of these out because i'm down to two minutes now so um <laughs> it's about time which oh, that was kind of, absolutely oh. cracked 66 67 two astronauts go back to prehistoric earth and make friends with the natives <laughs> so it looks yeah, really bizarre <laughs> that was I another mean, one that kind of, yeah. no more it was more like uh, land of the lost land of the remember. lost gotcha um and so time tracks which was 93 mm-hmm. space yeah. pranked mm-hmm. space precinct our vr5 hypernauts crime traveler mercy point prey code name eternity the last train so tell me if any of these are good at the end now and again yeah. i saw part of total recall it was okay um and strange luck which was the last one that somebody was telling me. oh and threshold so i i'd never heard of threshold and yet that just came out about 10 years ago so threshold I threshold is brandon braga and david s goyer and david Heyman. Series yeah, most... focusing on a secret government project investing in the first contact with an extraterrestrial species again. So yeah, mo- most of those like '90s, early mm. thousands ones, they're not very good because they're they're all kind of the same and they're all kind of blah. Because that was right. the point. They're getting scared to really experiment, so sure. you get just tiny little tweaks on a theme. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and remember, a lot of them are also being produced uh, for like independent TV, and for there were a bunch of startup networks that thought that saw Fox and thought, "Hey, we can do that too." Yeah, and so we got primetime, we got P10, which is the Paramount one, right. and we also had oh, there's CW now is actually what we know is the CW was actually two networks at one point, and they right. merged together. And so anyway, the whole point is so, and they needed content, right? So they mm-hmm. were just chunking this stuff out. And there, was, sure. there were a ton of these, as Don said, really, really derivative series. Mm-hmm. Um, so no wonder I didn't know any of them is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Basically it, yeah. A lot There's a reason why been... they're obscure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of them okay. would only have been shown in very limited markets and then it would have disappeared. Gotcha. Like they would have been shown in a few independent stations that had joined this quote unquote network. And then they would have, uh, yeah, you'd never see them again. Oh, yeah. thanks. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of this, guys. I had mm. so much fun. I'm sorry I couldn't stay longer. I can't wait to yeah. hear what else you guys talk about. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you added so many things for the uh, for Rob's <laughs> list. <laughs> my fingers I'll never be off, asked but, back okay. again. <laughs> yeah, well, 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 I'll have my revenge later, Jack. Oh, I will. <laughs> Take care, folks. Talk to you later, Jack. Bye. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> He didn't hyperlink any of them either. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Here's so, oh. here's the one he mentioned. It's a Time Express. 
with Vincent Wait. Price. That's an odd one. I've never heard of that before. Okay. Look, looking at the pictures of them, it looks familiar, but right. I can't. I can't really uh, put a finger on it. It's. A, it looks to be another one of them, like uh, Fantasy Island kind of shows. Um. So yeah, Fantasy Island was so popular. Yeah, there's going to be tons of copies of it. Uh, that I'm surprised we didn't get the Love Boat in space, but I'm sure that someone thought of it. It probably just didn't make it the pilot stage. Actually, on my list of things that really should never happen again, I have kind of the equivalent. Oh, what did you find? It's not the love boat in space. It's the love boat on a super high-trek intercontinental train. Super train. Yeah, there it is. Yep. <laughs> you found super train. Oh, yeah, there's one that's, I think it's only got five or six episodes. Yeah, because what they did for that one is it costs like a bajillion dollars an episode because they built the train and all the scenery in that. Mm-hmm. And I've seen shots of the guys setting up the models. They built it, and it looks to be like 135 scale. So those sets were immense. I believe it. That that sounds about right, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was effectively a science fiction series. Well, it is a science fiction series. But, yeah, they on a giant train, which is, yeah. uh, okay. That's, that's a little Cause... odd, but all right. Because the Love Boat thing was another one of those shows. There were so many ripoffs. Yeah. And they usually only lasted like about three or four episodes, and they went away because the original wasn't that good to begin with. Well, also, the original kind of sucked up all the oxygen. If I recall yeah. right, by the way, Super Train was nine episodes. Uh, so, <laughs> um, if I recall right, it, Love Boat, because my mother used to watch them, was back to back with Fantasy Island. Yeah. And that was like a solid killer block. I mean, for years, no one else could even come close to you know, competing during that time block because everyone watched those shows. And when you think about it, really, Fantasy Island is basically the Love Boat hmm. because they did the same kind of, of stories that the Love Boat would be. Yeah, people they would come on, they'd hook up. They'd find their true love. They'd solve, like, a problem that had been bugging them. That's what Fantasy Island was with, like, some creepy special effects and stuff. Yeah. the Fantasy Island, though, if I remember right, allowed for, like, the whole point of Fantasy Island, suddenly they could end up at different places and times and things yeah. like that as well. It truly did have that fantasy aspect to it. Yeah. Um, which made it a little bit different. But, yeah, no, no, you're right. And they they, they were, in a lot of ways, the same type of show. I mean, I mean... Yeah, there were a lot of those shows in that, during that period. That's absolutely <laughs> true. Um, in fact, actually, to be honest, that's one of those things I'm surprised hasn't come back. Fantasy like, Island? Oh, I know. They've, they've brought back Fantasy Island. They've even tried rebooting The Love Boat. Yeah. But for some reason, that kind of show where there's multiple, like, these plot lines that go on each week and we have our guest stars that pop in each week and all that kind of disappeared at a certain point and has never come back again. Yeah, but I think I know why. Um, because well, why? Well, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say a big part of Fantasy Island was often uh, bringing back a lot of uh, older movie stars, yeah, and people from previous generations, and we just don't have that anymore. <laughs> we we do, but the catch is because it was also seeing like contemporary stars and such, right? Yeah. Um, I think when you got reality shows like The Osmonds and stuff, that took its place. Oh, maybe. Because it's a similar idea. It's uh, get like a old school B list celebrity, um, hijinks mm-hmm. ensue, wrap it all up in the end. Everybody laughs, roll credits. Like that's basically yeah. what a lot of we have tons of those shows. They just don't have a premise behind them anymore, like they used to. Right. I guess that makes a certain amount of sense. And is kind of sad, but okay, sure. Eventually they'll they'll do it because you're already looking at like those shows are kind of dying off Mm -hmm. and eventually some star somewhere will need a new vehicle and they'll do something like that where it'll be celebrity X and tacked onto a wacky premise that it's not really their character. It's them, but with a wacky premise. And then you'll see this kind of thing grow out of that. Mm Mm-hmm. Because in a lot of ways, the, those shows like Love Boat Net were kind of reverse variety shows. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what they were, yeah. So, and then, like I see, we're kind of in the variety show era now. Mm, ish. We are, uh, ish. Well, you, you know, things go around, right? They cycle. Yeah. Because we, it, and nothing quite goes away anymore. 
But because you've got like that's what all those like like uh, so you think you have talent kind of shows are they're they're the variety show without the without the formal writers basically. Yeah, well that's true, and they're also much cheaper to produce because you're not bringing on people with actual talent. You're bringing on wannabes, some of whom yeah. do have actual talent, but yeah, okay, which they I can see what, that. Which the old variety shows did, too, because you'd always have a segment or two with, like, an up-and-coming young whatever that you'd never heard of that right, would get, get some time, mostly because they felt time and they were cheap. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Very true. Mm. Okay. So um, I've got one for you. Uh-oh. Uh, the Man from Atlantis. Oh, okay. <laughs> Another one that uh, from, from the 1970s, which is basically, for better or for worse, it's basically an Aquaman TV series. Yeah. Um, which is at least I think in the series. I think there was an actual series to it. Let me double check. Yeah, there was with Patrick um, Duffy. With Patrick Duffy, yeah, it was basically, and uh, the whole point of the series was he was basically an amnesiac Aquaman. So he hung out with these ocean researchers or something, and they basically, um, yeah, you know, it, they, they, it, it's Aquaman because the original Aquaman. Aquaman, Arthur Curry, didn't know who he was. He just showed up as a baby at a lighthouse. Right. Okay, there there we go. So yeah, it literally is Aquaman. There yeah. we go. That that makes sense. It was called The Man from Atlantis. Um oh there are actually seventeen episodes of it too. Yeah, because there was I, I, I have vague memories of watching it. Yeah. Yeah, there was there was like uh there were supposed to be toys and stuff too to tie into it, but it, it didn't last long enough for them to come into production. Okay, I did see that. Um there was also from that period. There was also an Invisible Man series as well. Yeah. That, that was that uh, the was that the British one? I think that was the British one. It was the. I have big memories of watching it. I thought. Well, no wait. I thought that was American. Hold on. Oh, no, I think there's two. I think there was a British. That the British was the Invisible Man. He was a spy that turned invisible. Right. And then the American one was was something like the Delta Man or the. Or 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 like science agent, or it, it had a weird no, name. No, there's a, there's a series called The Invisible Man. Stars uh, it was created by uh, Har- Harvey Bennett and Stephen Bochco. Star David McCallum, the the Russian guy, the man from Uncle. Now it was um, with the watch. At thirteen episodes, uh, Dr. Daniel Weston was a scientist working with the government think tank known as the KLAE Corporation, who was rendered invisible by a formula conducted concocted by himself that was supposed to be used for matter transformation. Before it can return to normal, he discovers that it has, the federal government is like evil and shit. Uh, I'm just paraphrasing. Um, <laughs> and so he goes off and he becomes an agent for KLE, fighting crime and battling saboteurs, while simultaneously working in the laboratory to rediscover the formula because he's, he's permanently invisible, but he's wearing like you know things to let people see him temporarily. Hmm. Okay. It was, it's basically kind of a spy superhero show. Yeah, from that period, from 1975, apparently. And that's an American one, okay? And the one you're talking about, the Delta Man, yeah, I think that was the one with the watch. Okay, yeah. Where he had the watch that let him turn invisible for like five minutes or something like that or whatever. Yeah, just for a few seconds and something bad would happen if he stayed out longer. I can totally see that. So anyone, any others on your list? <laughs> I have like a, a bajillion. We're Couple... not going to be here for two hours. Okay, so <laughs> let's let's so let's uh, so let's hit some of the other more noteworthy ones. Let's hit some of the noteworthy ones. We're not going to extend this out any longer than we have to. I got three that I would say are noteworthy for weird, different weird bits. Okay, what ones are they? One that I would like to have seen another season was Ancient Warriors. Is that the one where they pick two random ancient warriors and they have them, well, they go through what each of them did and then they have actors for using those techniques fight each other? No, you're thinking Deadliest Warrior. Oh, Deadliest Warrior. What's Ancient Warriors then? Ancient Warriors was a Discovery Channel documentary that each episode they would pick one kind of historical fighting dude. Right. And they would do an episode about them and they'd talk about their history and techniques and stuff. It was the same idea without the fighting. Okay, got it. And I remember because that was the first time I'd actually seen a real person using monkey style. Oh, Because the the Shaolin episode shows a guy and he's got the staff and he's doing the things and he does this weird thing where he stands it on end and he's balanced on top and he looks like a monkey and he's like rubbing his head and stuff and looking around. Hmm. Huh. That's pretty cool. 
Mm-hmm. It was it was a neat show. It, it, it didn't get a lot of press. I remember too because I'd watch it with Tim, and Tim had pointed out the uh, the target marketing mm-hmm. because all the ads during it were "Join the gym, join the army," Grr! and so, uh-huh. which I thought was kind of funny. But yeah, they they knew what they were doing. <laughs> uh, yes, actually, there's a really cool series on right now, sorry to be contemporary, that's just started. Um, it's on uh, NHK World, okay. and um, which you probably our listeners would have to find online. NHK is Japan's national broadcaster. It's their version of like CBC or whatever, which is the Canadian Broadcast Corporation. Um, it's their national broadcaster, and NHK recently created NHK World, which is their English language channel, hmm. and they're doing. A whole bunch of different ones and one of them is called ninja truth okay and so there's these little 15 minute episodes that are each, and each of them cover two different aspects of you know legends about the ninja basically they pick it's kind of like mythbusters but specifically targeted just about ninja right and with this guy who looks like he walked out of the 1970s and has this deep rich voice it's this american guy actually oh. or, or no i think he's probably british um and you you'd have to see him but he's like he literally looks like he walked out of a 1970s like in search of or something like that he's the host <laughs> wow. and um anyway so and they but the kind of neat thing is they're they're rec- they're recreating a lot of the ninja uh tools that they would use because right. they're based on actual old manuals and they're sometimes having to guess what they actually use and they're trying different ones and things like that and it's it's actually it's kind of neat they're they're really short they're like 15 minutes each and so each seven minutes is dedicated to uh, like a technique or something like that that the ninja actually use they've done hmm. two so far if you i'll link to them you can find some people who put up like um bootleg copies up on youtube and uh, they're called ninja truth and they're pretty they're pretty entertaining i'll put a link up in the show notes mm-hmm. but it's kind of that kind of thing just ex- ex- just focused only on ninja right huh that sounds okay, pretty good so- yeah, it's actually it's pretty, it's just pretty fun. I'll send you the link later too. Hmm. Um, so, what's the uh, next on your list, Don? I'm going to go with a weird one that nobody remembers, and that was Spicy City. You're right. I don't remember that at all. Uh, it was Ralph Bakshi. He did was it. This... Mm-hmm. It was it was animated. He did it for HBO uh, mm-hmm. back in like the mid '90s. Right. It it's kind of this weird like cyberpunk noir series. Hmm. And it was, it was, it was, again, it was, if you like Ralph Bakshi, it was one of his better efforts. Mm -hmm. So you'd probably like it. If you don't like Ralph Bakshi, this will probably like disturb and sadden you. Okay. But yeah, it was this really weird, very tune-esque, like Mm -hmm. weird retro future cyberpunk series. Right. And it was it was like an anthology series that each episode was uh, was a different was a different story with different characters. The narrator was named Raven, and this, it took place ostensibly in her bar. Okay. Because there is an origin episode. They only made like six episodes. There is an origin. It's noteworthy because if you remember, Ralph Bakshi did Cool World. Yes, he did. And the movie that came out is literally nothing like what he had planned. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently halfway through production, uh, the the company who put it out, I can't remember who it was. It might have been was it Paramount maybe, or whoever whoever it was that that was mm-hmm. in charge, got real nervous and they added another kind of like assistant director producer guy to it. Uh huh. And that guy completely fucked it up because he took out all of the questionable bits and all of like the more mature bits and it's a Ralph Bakshi production. That's all it is. And the original movie was supposed to be way different. And right. I I get the impression that Spicy City is basically what Cool World was supposed to be. Hmm. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Old was Paramount. Paramount? Okay. Yep. I so, can yeah. totally see that. Okay, so this was him trying that idea again, but and ma- theoretically making it work. Yeah, probably him feeling bad about the movie, and this was kind of a chance to redeem himself in his own eyes sort of thing. Hmm. Makes sense. Mm. Okay, and what's your last one for the list? I'll go with another weird, obscure old cartoon from uh, mm-hmm. from the 90s. It was uh, Roswell Conspiracies. I have vague memories of that one. Okay. 
it was one of those ones, if anybody remembers, like, uh, cartoons in the 90s, uh, budgets were cut. Animation was kind of like a dying art at the time. So everything looked terrible. It was shot on, like, 12s, which if you're an animator, you're laughing right now. It's a good joke. If it's a joke, it might be true. Um, mm-hmm. What what the premise of the show was is that the legendary monsters were, were real, but they were actually aliens that ancient humans had misinterpreted. Right. So there are vampires, but the vampires that are actual form, they're like these, like, uh, like lizard people. Right. And the banshees were a big part of it. There were werewolves. There were all these different monsters. And some of them, the, the main characters were a group of, uh, I think they were like government agents. Mm-hmm. That some of the monsters were friendly, some weren't. But they were secretly working to try to protect humanity from like the evil aliens. Right. And it was, it was a neat, it was one of those things, it was a 90s nifty idea. Mm-hmm. But because it was done in the 90s, it was made to sell toys that, I think got released in limited supply and uh, it, it was just yeah. cranked out and the animation was terrible and the designs were very stripped down, but it had mm. enough nifty ideas that it's something if somebody wanted to redo, I think that would be fantastic. Right. Okay. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot there that you could really do something with. Right. Now that would, did that come out at the same time as like the men in black series they did? Yeah, it was a little after. It it definitely seemed to be made to capitalize on that. Right. Because okay, there, there were a few shows that kind of cro- treaded that line, like especially for mm-hmm. cartoons, the idea that there's aliens or monsters and they secretly work with the government. It was definitely one of them, but it had right. enough of a weird twist that it sort of felt like its own thing. Right. Okay. Very cool. Okay, so I think uh, probably we've probably given our uh, audience uh, more than enough viewing material. Uh, I'm sure that anyone who has listened to this show has probably found one thing that sounds at least remotely interesting. (laughs) And uh, if you're not sure about them, do come out and check the links uh, in the show notes. Uh, I'll link to at least the IMDB page for almost all of this somewhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe a few YouTube links mixed in as well. So you can actually check out some of these things. Because there has been a lot of TV, and we've barely, barely, barely scratched the surface. We're just looking at some of the ones that were kind of memorable. There was a lot of not-so-memorable TV as well. (laughs) A lot of it. There was. This is why I say, like, most of my list, you notice, are pre-90s. And again, it's because, like I say, once you got to the 90s, everybody kind of buttoned everything down. But especially you go to the 70s going into the 80s. It was that time that nobody knew what what was going to be the next big thing. Nobody knew what was was going to take off. Nobody knew the next trend. So in in desperation, they just tried damn near everything, which meant yeah, they did. Yeah, by volume alone, something in there, even if it was terrible, would still be interesting. Yes. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that. And I mean, a lot of this stuff got shown overseas. Um, they knew when they made it that generally they could probably make some money back from it. They, maybe who knows if it would actually be a hit, but it went yeah. somewhere, right? It yeah. all went somewhere. Yeah, well, we all uh, saw them, so. Yeah, exactly. Well, back in those days, we didn't have the internet, so we were kind of limited to whatever was on TV at that point. Mm-hmm. Even, but there were a ton of channels, but let's be honest, only a couple of them were worth watching. And so you eventually saw a lot of the weird stuff. I mean... When I think back, it's actually shocking to me how many sitcoms I saw as a kid. Like <laughs> when I was in my teens and as a young young in there, I saw a lot of sitcoms. Like I think pretty much every night I would probably watch TV. And so I'd be watching something every night, um, yeah. which is a scary thought for me now, just how much TV <laughs> I consumed as a kid. It's amazing my brain hadn't melted out of my ears, but apparently, yeah, I consumed a ridiculous amount of 80s television. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, um, it, oh, go ahead. In addition, of course, that's the evening TV. And then on weekends, I basically sat there in front of the TV. It's no wonder my parents were constantly pestering me to go out and like play in the <laughs> woods. Here that they were trying to get rid of me. But I'm pretty sure that they were actually, um, yeah, they wanted me to get some exercise. <laughs> uh, that's Sorry, fun. what? Did I, bought, <laughs> did I interrupt something? Oh, no. No, I just, just thinking that, yeah, I saw a lot of stuff too, but. I lived in a house full of people, so somebody was always watching something. Right. 
Yeah, my parents, oddly enough, were not big TV watchers. Huh. Uh, for the most part, my mother was the TV watcher. My father was indifferent to television. He didn't really care. He'd rather read or do something else. Right. Occasionally, he would join us for watching TV. He like he liked Star Trek: Next Generation. He joined us for that. That was actually family viewing for us for some reason. Our whole family would gather around and watch each episode of that show, right. which is interesting because it's one of the one of the only shows I can remember in our, my lifetime that my whole family would gather because we huh. all had slightly different tastes. But Next Gen was that was it. Hmm. Um, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, and uh, maybe Wonderful World of Disney when I was young. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe that too. Yeah. Because for those who don't know, Disney had like a hour two hour block I think it was two hour block from like six to eight on sunday nights on one of the network channels yeah and they would show uh, old tv episodes cartoons movies whatever they called it the wonderful world of disney and it was kind of their random disney stuff block yeah it was on for many years on sunday nights and that's how i saw a huge amount of old disney stuff like uh swamp fox for example oh okay that was one of my favorite things when i was a kid uh for those who don't know swamp fox was a um, Disney produced, I believe, uh, 1960s, probably might be 50s, but I think it's 60s, a uh, show about a uh, revolutionary uh, war hero who had the nickname the Swamp Fox. And it was basically kind of like Hogan's Heroes, except it was him and his buddies out foxing or, you know, out, uh, outwitting in a clever and comedic way the, uh, the British troopers who controlled America during the Revolutionary War. Like yeah. They were kind of this underground terrorist cell. We called them a terrorist cell today, but you know, they were still <laughs> lovable and everything. It's okay. No, they were freedom um, fighters. No, right. You're right. Freedom fighters, right. <laughs> this crude type of freedom fighters who, um, yeah, were tweaking the nose of the British Empire. Um, each, and I used to love them. They were very, you know, fun and adventurous. I should go. I haven't seen them in like a couple decades. I should probably go back. But when I was a kid, that was like my favorite thing ever whenever they show episodes of Swamp Fox. Huh. Yeah, they're probably out there because that's – I don't I think – guarantee you they are. Yeah, I don't think people realize that back in the day, Disney did a lot of, like, TV shows. Uh, the Wonderful World of Disney used to also show uh, – Disney Studios used to do a lot of educational shorts. Yep. And they used to end up on there as well because that's where Ludwig von Drake comes from. Yes, yeah. He's their uh, professor that would introduce all their shows. Yeah. And I remember that too because when I was in university when I took uh, nuclear physics, one of the professors was Ludwig von Drake. He was well, a, you know, he was a parody of all the German professors that the Americans lifted after World War II. Yeah, but this, yeah, Operation Paperclip. No, but yeah, this guy had the same <laughs> accent, same hair. He was a little stooped over, dude. I remember that, that, wow, I'm being taught by a famous uh, cartoon star. Yep. Oh, here we go. Swamp Fox. It starred uh, Leslie Nielsen. Oh, wow. Produced by Disney. Starred Leslie Nielsen as Francis Marion. Um and it was based on a 1959 biography of Marion. Uh, the theme song, Swamp Fox, Swamp Fox, Tail in His Hat, Nobody Knows Where the Swamp Fox At, was sung by Nielsen as well. Huh. I can sing that because I do. I remember it as a kid. <laughs> um, the Disney Channel apparently also rerun episodes. Uh, but apparently there's only like eight episodes of the whole series. Huh. Yeah, it's Leslie Nielsen as a young man. Yeah, because he used to be an action hero. I don't think people remember that. Yeah, yeah, he was at one point. And then he did Police Squad, and now that was the end of that. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, yeah, exactly. But uh, it was worth it. It was totally worth it. Yeah. Yeah, it, look, it looks like, yeah, there's only maybe eight episodes. Oh, yeah, here we go, from 1959 to 1961. But they only did – it's another weird TV thing that most people don't realize. So here we go. 1959, they do two episodes, mm -hmm. okay? In 1960, they do – four episodes and then 1961 they do two more episodes mm -hmm. they were basically treating them like one hour movies basically and they would just kind of make these things here and there and because uh, that, that's something like i said a lot of people don't who weren't around for that period don't re realize even if a show got picked up sometimes it only literally got three or four episodes and that was the whole season yeah because there were shows that they would do them as mm -hmm. kind of movies movies because the first season of like columbo Mm -hmm. are all movies it's like four or five movies it, it it he he was doing these that come out every month or every two months for a while before it became what we would think of as a regular tv series yeah exactly and yeah a lot yeah. a lot of the adventure shows like that would do the same thing because they would be shown 
as part of something else. Like you guys mentioned uh, cliffhangers. Yeah. I, I think that was kind of the last show of that format or near the end. Mm. But that used to be a thing where you would tune in and you would get like multiple episodes of different shows. Yep, there would be that block. Well, T- Cliffhangers was literally like a show with this, with them swapping out. I think there were more than three for Cliffhangers too. I think they actually had another one, but it was only a couple episodes. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I do remember watching. And then, of course, really what was going on was then they would take these things and they'd repackage them, at least with Cliffhangers, as a mo- quote-unquote movie. Which yeah. Because really, that's what each of them was. It was just a movie they chopped up into like pieces. Yeah, because that was a thing too back uh in the 70s that I mm-hmm. think you had mentioned before that they would take a couple of episodes of a show and then splice them together and call it a movie. Yep. Yeah, that was pretty common back then. Because mm-hmm. again, just content, right? They're looking for content that's cheap, effective, yeah. preferably, to uh, fill the airways. They're just looking for that cheap stuff to fill the airwaves and to... Yeah, keep people entertained, especially for independent stations and late night and everything. They just, mm-hmm. Anything they could stick up there, they would. Yep. Which which is fortunate because it let us see decades worth of television kind of all compressed together and mashed up and everything. Yeah. Kids. Yeah, that's the thing I do think is kind of a shame now that mm-hmm. you don't get a lot of the older obscure shows rerun anywhere. No. Unless it's the old obscure show network, which if you don't have, you're not going to be exposed so people aren't exposed to the variety of stuff that they used to be. Not that it was all good, but again, it was you got to see mm, something yeah. a little different. Well, and also the old shows. Like, isn't there a retro TV network or something like that? I believe there is at least one. Yeah, there's um, a few. And, and they basically all show. Well, they they show the hits of that of those eras. They're, they're mm-hmm. basically, like they're not showing you the obscure stuff. Not usually. They're showing you, yeah, the hits. Like it'll be Beverly Hillbillies and Mash and yeah. Golden Girls and all the stuff that was the hits of those eras. They're not going to show you all the the weird quasi turkeys and that. Not unless <laughs> they have maybe a special, you know, two hour or one hour block or something once a week where they show you something weird just for the fun of it. Yeah, and then part of that too is. Um... When they did the Mr. Mom Batman movie, Mm. that killed it. Why? Uh, Because I remember being told what happened was the the Michael Keaton Batman took forever to get done because when people thought Batman, they thought of the na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na Batman. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And nobody wanted to make a multi-bajillion dollar movie about na-na-na-na-na-na-na Batman. So it finally came out. It was the Mm -hmm. biggest thing like ever at the time yes it was and all of the executives at all the different networks and studios that lost their minds because like well if this goofy shit takes off what's going to be the next hit and then they bought the rights to absolutely everything and they sat on it. right and that was why the irony being that was also getting into the 90s when the different uh startup networks took off uh Mm -hmm. you had an expansion cable they needed material Everybody was sitting on shit like my mother, the car, because they were convinced that could be the next big thing. And that was one of the reasons why they had to start making their own stuff. Yep. Yeah. It forced people to actually make new stuff because all the old stuff was just tied up. Yeah. And then the problem you had was when they started making new stuff, it was like in the 90s and that they were scared that this is why it all kind of starts looking alike because – you have a brand new network. We got limited funding. We can. We have to be real careful what they do. Nobody would do like the brand new My Mother the Car because, again, you know, that sounds like a really stupid idea. Like, if it doesn't go over, I don't want to be the guy whose name is attached to the stupid idea. Right. Oh, whereas back in the day with the old shows, um, the budgets weren't as high. Mm. They were still just cranking this this stuff out, and especially even when you get to like say the 60s even going into the 70s they were so unsure of the the formula and the marketing that they were more willing to uh yeah just do that just crank out two episodes and see what happens kind of thing yeah a lot of stuff like that came out in the 70s i'd say the 70s truly was an era of television experimentation not just movie but television as well yeah because as you said they didn't know what was going to work they didn't know what to do really so it's just like okay we'll just try that and so 
that's why like Gene Roddenberry has like six or seven pilots that he did for sci-fi series during the 1970s. Yeah. And plus there's all these other weird shows that popped up during that era, mostly pilots, but again, occasionally stuff that we talked about during this episode yeah. came in the set, all came in the seventies because they were willing to experiment. Um, actually, the nice thing is I would argue that we're kind of in a weird version of that right now. But with the online networks, like Netflix yeah. is still in its experimental stage where they're still willing to just like, okay, that sounds like someone might watch it. Okay, here, you know, here's a couple million dollars. Go make that. Make a season of that stuff, which is where Stranger Things came from. Yeah. And there's all these other networks like uh, the Amazon one and there's there's a Disney one coming next year. There's mm-hmm. another one that I'm forgetting. Well, there's Crave, <laughs> the Canadian one. There, basically, there's all these online networks, and they're all desperate for content and to tr- and willing to try new things. So we're in a new experimental stage. Yeah, the only problem that we run into nowadays, too, is – well, there's two. The one is because there are all of these, like, like pay stations and that, mm-hmm. you don't get the potential audience exposure that you you might say back in the day when there was only, like, three networks. That's true. And I do find that you get a lot of weird stuff, but it tends to be grounded in things that are safe. Because mm, you, met- you mentioned Stranger Things, and Stranger Things does definitely feel like something that's new and different. Mm-hmm. But it's just seeped in 80s nostalgia. Well, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say it isn't really new and different. It's it is that it isn't. It's something that could have been made in the 80s, but just wasn't. Mm. And and so that's, yeah, that's kind of how they set it up. You're right. It's just pure 80s nostalgia. And and not even just that, but they just cram so much 80s into every single episode. Well, that's kind of the point. Yeah, but like I say, I think that kind of holds it back because that hook mm. is still something familiar and that's, actually, yeah, okay, go. Sorry. Well, and and that's what I find like a lot of these shows that are that are that are coming out that are actually different. They're still definitely grounded in the familiar, and I think that kind of holds them back. Um, Stranger Things, from my perspective, is held back by two things. Really, one, it doesn't quite know what it is. Uh-huh. Like, it's not quite willing to be a horror series, really, but it's not quite willing to be more of the. Um, uh, growing up feel good series either right it's kind of it's kind of somewhere in between um it's kind of like if stephen king wrote the wonder years uh-huh. and um which it, so it does work in some ways but not quite the other problem they're quickly running into is cast bloat mm-hmm. where despite occasionally you know killing occasional characters they're keep adding characters with each season but they're not really getting rid of that many of the old ones so suddenly they got to come up with reasons why the old ones are all still around and they've got to give them things to do while introducing new characters as well Mm. because everyone loves the old cast and they're terrified to get rid of any of them which is part of the problem okay so we have a thriller horror series or esque series which is supposed to keep you on the edge of your seat but it's blatantly obvious they're not willing to kill off any of the cast right um so how does that work it's like doing a teen slasher film except nobody dies Oh, okay. Can you imagine doing a PG version of that? Well, that's kind of Stranger Things at this point. April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day? Yeah, it was a teen slasher flick where nobody died. Okay, there we go. But um, or but weren't they faking their deaths? Because that yeah. was the whole point, April Fool's Day? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. But, imagine, but this is one where just nobody dies. And mm. I mean, okay, they kill off like one character each season basically and then that's it but there are characters that are just there for that season and then they're gone anyway yeah and so because of course they kill them off but the point is that the quote-unquote main cast are basically shrouded in what these days is called plot armor Uh which is basically you know the plot will always make sure nothing bad actually happens to them um, huh. Anyway, that's my critique of Stranger Things. I could go on for a while, but I, this, that's not what this episode is about. This is about cool retro TV, and Stranger Things is modern, despite how it's trying to be retro anyway. Modern so, retro. Okay, since we're wandering, I think it's time to bring us to a close. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, we greatly appreciate your listenership. And uh, if you want to talk about your own 80s TV memories or anything like that, please head on over to obeythedna.com. 
and uh, we'll be happy to debate, discuss, uh, dissuade, or dismay <laughs> you uh, with our knowledge of um, old trashy TV shows, or sometimes not so trashy. <laughs> good night, folks. Have a great have a great week, and we'll see you next time. And good night, Jack Ward, wherever you are. <laughs> good night, Jack. Bye. Thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like to hear more or join the conversation, come visit us at ObeyTheDNA.com. You can also find us on iTunes or whatever fine podcast site forgot to lock their back door. So until next time, remember that to master the nerdly arts takes time, practice, and enough Coca-Cola to drop a rhino. See ya! See ya!